just started doing them again. Uh, but we're, we're live now, by the way. So everybody, this is Omar hey. Itzuf. I think you guys know who the fuck he is. I'm hey. Ron Roberts from Everyday Day Fitness. I thought we'd get together. I wanted to talk today to Omar about the about basically about YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. he, I was telling him when we were in the green room, as they call it, uh, you're one of the first people I was watching on YouTube. Thank and, you. And uh, I find it amazing because as like an, a YouTube OG, no. you haven't really changed your changed your style. And that's rare because most of the people that are old school really, if they either change completely or they're gone, you know, sure. and you pretty much stick to like who you are. So, uh, first of all, introduce yourself to anybody that doesn't fucking know you because I'm sure everybody fucking knows you, but go ahead. Thanks, Alan, for that intro. In the first place, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, the fact that I haven't changed in over a decade. Uh, but yeah, my name's Omar Isaf. I've been creating YouTube fitness content of the informative nature over the last decade. The goal has been to become more educated on my part and try and distill useful, practical information for the masses, a little bit more with a strength focus. So mm -hmm. I'm interested in powerlifting. I also like weightlifting, strong man. So some strength sports, I'm a strength enthusiast, as well as body composition, so hypertrophy and losing fat. But overall fitness information, more skewed towards men versus women, but still for a general population. Now, what? Uh, so what got you, what you got, got you started on YouTube? Accident, man. And that's uh, there's a big difference. And we were talking uh, before this one live just about YouTubers and how people approach different things. When I started on YouTube, which would be 2009, at a high school, you know, in, in university, and from university, I did you say out of high school in 2009? Yeah. Yeah, so I a, a little bit after uh, high school, but yeah, I'm, uh, you know, that, and that's why when people are like, you look like you're 14 in my first videos, guess what, player? I'm 14. Um, <laughs> Shit. But, but it was one of those things where I was a trainer, I worked at the University of Windsor, I was working with some athletes, I was working in the kinesiology department, my degree was actually an economics degree, it was a dual degree, business economics, but I just like training, I come from an athletic background where my mom was a sprinter, played a lot of sports growing up, just wanted to keep active, um, so I started training, and then from training, I wanted to start training people, and I thought, this is a hell of a lot better, I like the self-improvement aspect of lifting, it's a hell of a lot better than serving people, I was also a bartender, um, and so I want to do that fast forward then to working for about a year. And after working for about a year, I worked in a big box gym, which is for some, it could definitely be soul crushing, um, where they care about the metrics more than the statistics as opposed to the people. And that's, that's a huge problem of, as uh, chip Conrad calls it the fitness industrial complex. But anyways, in short summary, um, I got a promotion where I was then the fitness director of this boutique gym. I wanted to start helping some of the people that would come in because we do fitness assessments to uh, you know ascertain how uh, fit they are. I wanted to create some content around the training to flesh out what they should be doing because everyone has the same general questions. How should I warm up? What type of cardio should I do? So very basic questions. But rather than let that interfere with the training session, which we only have 45 to 60 minutes, let me provide that in addition to it. Um, and so I wanted to film some content. I'd never filmed content before. It was 2009. I remember I first discovered YouTube off of the Andy Samberg SNL skit, um, Lazy Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just Googling. And it was the only place that I uh, found. There's a few others, but it seemed like the one that was the easiest because me and technology do not get along. To upload videos. So in 2009, I decided to film my first video, and then you had to make it public. There was no unlisting. There was no private group you could share to. So it just has to be public. And then I released that. Um, and then from there, it kind of just accidentally happened, man. I mean, because I remember I was watching you in like 2000, I guess 2009. Wow. Okay. Uh, that, your OG. No, not 2009. Excuse me. Uh, wait, 2015 or 2014, yeah. something like that. Yep. I really yeah, didn't yeah. watch. I really didn't watch YouTube until like 2014, and then I yeah. started YouTube like 2000, I guess 17 or 16. 2007. Yep. It all gets to be a fucking blur. It really <laughs> yes. fucking does. It does. Um, you know, the like people refer to like the old school, the OG YouTubers like you. I think Alan Thrall was. was Alan Thrall came in a little after you guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, stuff like that. Like, do do you know most of them? Yeah. So uh, it's fortunately there. At first, there was really no community because you just had these different individuals trying to film content. And uh, as we're talking about it a little bit before, if I had to break down YouTube fitness, uh, what happened since probably 2007, I see it as five distinct phases, at least four. 
Um, but basically what happened, you have these people, no one remembers this guy, but I was that guy on YouTube that remember this, remembers this, called Stan Firm, who used to use, he was the OG thumbnail manipulator, where Alan, he would have ass shots, he would have this, that, and he was a fitness trainer, just wore a red polo shirt. I'm pretty sure YouTube removed him and removed all his content because some of his thumbnails not that they're just very sexual, but they were not representative of his content, and YouTube was a lot more like the Wild West back then. But anyways, you had all these fracturing uh, communities that were trying to post their content, and then over time, I think, like does attract like, where individuals of a similar mindset, or also people, because it's that social media aspect, people want to share, they want to talk about things, they want to communicate with one another, people want to collaborate. I think you got to be particular with who you collaborate with, because in a way, they you're vouching for them when they're on your channel, you know. Uh, but there has been a gradual over time unity, I'd say, amongst a certain lifting individuals. Alan's a good buddy of my, uh, mine, Sal Mike, uh, Bart, uh, a bunch of people. And then there's the evidence-based crew, I'd say, that came out, guys like Jeff Nippard. Uh, probably, Jeff, see, that's what's interesting when you said that, Alan. It depends on how we want to define things. Mm -hmm. um, Alan Thrall has been making content, as, I think, since 2012. Yeah, Omar, I'm, getting, I'm getting yeah. some comments saying, if, is there a way you can turn down your mic like 10%? Because there's a little distortion. I, I don't hear it, but apparently for them there is. Yeah, it's, uh, guys, I honestly apologize. I'll try and fix it. It's one of those things, man, where uh, I have my actual mic, but I need an external source for this guy. Let me try and adjust it here. It should be real easy. Omar's like me. Technology is not our fucking thing. No, no, this is. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm making this happen. Like I cannot even begin to tell you how fucking hard it was for me to do this. So. <laughs> no, it's you know what's sad is um, you have figured this out better than I have. Just give me one somebody, second. Somebody man. gave me the, like the thing we're on right now. Somebody gave me the link to this site, and I just fucking used it. So yeah. I, didn't, I didn't figure shit out. Somebody figured it out for me. I, yeah. I, I can, I, I'm good at like helping people with their nutrition and their diets and shit like that. If it's mechanic, like I get somebody to change the oil in my fucking car, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you I'll, I'll figure out how to do like a fucking you know fifty inch box jump, but like if it's like if I have to change the brakes, we're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way we're gonna fucking make it. So you were saying, you were talking about the different phases yeah. of YouTube. Yeah, and just everyone, let me know if this sounds better. I try to switch it. I honestly know shit about this, and I'm I'm just in you know our uh, uh, stream yard or whatever. I'm just in that Alan. So I can't. That see sounds that sounds great. That sounds. Oh, it sounds, sounds great. Good to okay, me. Cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think. Somebody says I'm officially deaf now. Shut the fuck up. Don't be a pussy. <laughs> That's not <laughs> Go ahead. Maybe I'm just yelling. I was going to say, we might very well, Alan, be the only people that have not used StreamYard for cam shows. Yeah. I thought that's what it was just used for, so we are the first of its kind. Um, yeah. Alan Thrall, he started making content in 2012. His channel popped off in probably 2015, and that really explains how content works for most individuals. Jeff mm -hmm. Nippard had his Ice Cream for PRs, I think it was called, podcast since 2013. He's probably been making content since 2012, and his channel took off in 2016, but there's been a gradual unification of certain groups of individuals, like-minded individuals that I think care about trying to change the industry. I would put a you, I'd put James, um, sure sports science in that category um, of people. Now I'd call you guys part of the fourth and fifth wave, which is really good. I, I think overall the fitness IQ has improved on YouTube and that's yeah, thanks to individuals like yourself, other people putting in the time and effort. So it's very cool to see from, if people were around 2009, they would be surprised at the dearth of content. Yeah. I, th I think that like my, my generation, if you want to call it like me and James and a few other people, I think our, we have like, we came out of necessity because the generation after you guys was like the V shreds and people shit like that. Like the people just, mm. just like, you know, cookie cutter put, putting that shit out there, ads, 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 and all of that, trying to just fucking get the money, the money they can. Like, you and a bunch of other people, you put out good quality content. But like when it's the whole, you know, take my body type quiz fucking shit, you know, like yeah. constantly. Like, I mean, I think that that's why it was almost like a necessity for people like me and James and stuff like that to be like, hey, that's that's stupid. You know, like because yeah. at, the, at the time, all of you guys had larger channels and lots to risk by calling by, by you know, putting, you know, putting your name on like this guy's a fucking idiot. You know, like, I, like you know, at the time, what he's going to sue me. What's he going to sue me for? What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Someone that has nothing to lose is the most dangerous person. Yeah, but also, yeah, I, I, what, what, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, Alan, that it also, sadly enough, from being in the industry or on YouTube for a while, I see how it's sort of cyclical, where mm -hmm. these, let's say, these asshats will just gradually emerge because people find out, oh, you can make money from this thing. 
And so they start pumping ads and ad revenue. They prey on people's insecurities because yep. we know even from the overall fitness industry that insecurities, emotions are some of the things that are easiest to manipulate in order to make some money. Um, and that's what happens with some of those people. I think it's one of those things that the cream does eventually rise to the top or some of the I content agree. that's out there and people gravitate towards it. I think the niche, what you've done and we're speaking a little bit before about this, that's cool is taking the general population and trying to educate them on a variety of different topics where you see things once again in the media being talked about and you're like, well, wait a second, like, let's try and reframe these things. Let's think about these. Is this in fact healthy? How do we define healthy? Right. right. And there's, and at the core, it's the idea of self-improvement, which oh, is absolutely. very important. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, the th it's, that's what's sold to people. Like right now, you know, right, right now, my wife and I do mainly weight loss coaching, like, well, specifically weight loss coaching, you know, for, yeah. for people with more than a little, like we don't get people stage ready because I, right. I personally don't think bodybuilding is all that, you know, healthy. Yeah. Um, but then again, powerlifting, it's not like, not like powerlifting did a great, great, good shit for my body either. But, yeah. um, but I just see like so much randomized bullshit. That's one of the reasons why I started watching your shit. Cause I've like, I I've, I've known about like known a lot about nutrition for a long time, you know? Yeah. And I liked your nutrition content. But then when you, I made a video about you, uh, about your supplement because yeah. you were very much railing against kind of like these supplements don't like, why the fuck do you need these things? Here's the basic shit that works. Mm -hmm. And you know, in reality, it's just like, People that say supplements don't work are idiots because supplement ingredients like creatine works, caffeine works, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. All that shit works, right? But you were one of the only people that was out there saying you don't need all this extra fluff and you yeah. made your your pre-workout. That's basically, it was basically just like a bare bones. Here's the clinical doses. This is what I'm going to fucking give you. And yeah. then people lost their fucking shit. I remember like reading comments. I'm like, they were bitching at him to say, you know, well, what do you what do you suggest instead? He suggests it, and now they're fucking pit, bitching. Like sometimes yeah. the audience is just fucking dumb. You know, yeah. I mean, like they, they really like sometimes they just they, for a while it goes through cycles. Also, too, they just look to really hate people. You know, yes. <clears throat> now, I I, I get I get, my, I get hated fairly enough anyway because <laughs> I don't try to make friends. I don't think, but um, to me, like that's that's an interesting concept where it's like you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. How have you dealt with that through because your channel continues to still just keep going, chugging along, yeah. Yeah. and you know, you still have content, you're continually gaining and everything like that. And you've never gone through a period of like harshness, you know, like where it's like yeah. it became very popular to hate you. Right. <laughs> like right. The, I, um, I call it the Taylor Swift effect, where it's like yes. you're so fucking popular that they fucking hate you, you know? Yes. And you how did you avoid that? Because I know a bunch of people who went through shit like that. Like I even like um because it's like disappointment, like, you know, like sometimes, like I was, I was disappointed in Alan Thrall when he got uh, starting strength certified because I was like, right. what the fuck, starting right. strength, you get Alan Thrall certified. Right. And like his content was so good and so beyond, you know, because it's well known I'm not a Ripito fan, but you know, right. it's like, yeah, I, I felt that Alan Thrall like almost diminished himself a little bit by going with starting strength. Like I really did. You know, like kind of let me down because I, yeah. <laughs> I used to like, you know, tell people like, well, his squat tutorial you should go to, it's fucking perfect, you know, and all of a sudden he's like fucking talking about, Rip it to him, like fuck, god damn, yeah. you're supposed to be smart, you know. Yeah. And I think he is, and I, I know that they're not together anymore. And I do believe that a lot of starting strength has moved away from even Rip it to him. But yeah. how did how did you avoid that shit? So great point that you brought up, Alan, about Taylor Swift. The whole goal in life is to always be underrated versus overrated. Yeah. So people to personally feel that you deserve more attention than what you're getting. And I think that comes as a result of a grassroots movement, mm -hmm. such as people telling each other, oh, you gotta check out this guy's content, as opposed to overtly relying. I mean, we all do to some extent, the thumbnail from speaking to mm -hmm. someone like Jeff Nippard, um, and it really hit home in the last year after I spoke to him, he said, man, there's two things that determine if someone click, uh, clicks on your video. <laughs> well, three things, two you can influence. One is the thumbnail. The second, of course, is the title. The third actually would be views he puts forth in that it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. If two videos, same thumbnail, same title, one has a million views and one has 100 views, who are people going to click on? A million right. view one, right? right. Um, but in regards to trying uh, to avoid or, or maybe not getting that phase of people hating or that criticism, 
I think I've been fortunate. I think it also is one of those things where when you brought up the pre-workout, fun fact, after three years of now having almost three years, like we've almost made it. I'm not, this isn't a poor me story or anything. No money because it is one of those things where we wanted to do right. We wanted to have high clinical doses. We wanted to have it uh, be affordable. I wanted to stand behind it. And I think the team Taleb talks about this where he talks about having skin in the game where he has mm-hmm. a lot of great uh, books. One of them is called Anti-Fragile where he's a quantity gets into the financial stuff. He gets into the probabilities. But essentially that if you do something, there should be some sort of skin in the game. Mm-hmm. I feel this way. Therefore, I I have a personal investment or I'm committed in this way. And I think all too often what you'll have online, unfortunately, not not uh, people that leave comments. I'm talking about actual individuals that participate and then it becomes a little gossipy and so forth. Is that you have some of these individuals on the sideline that are judging rather than trying to participate. And they'll be like, well, I'll do it this way. I'll do it that way. I remember this one person, and I'm not going to name the person's name. Let me guess. Who is it? Who is, who is in a private group, Alan, and they're talking about just the myth of being hardcore. And what I mean hardcore, like, I would never sell out. It's like, is this selling out? Is this selling out making a good product? Like, how do we define these things? It's almost like to some people trying to be an entrepreneur or in business for yourself is antithetical uh, to, you know, being a morally consistent person, which is just not the case that I think that they've been so marketed to in any which way that any form of marketing or any form of branding mm-hmm. um, but um, as an example, it's interesting. There's an individual in a private group. Uh, she was a powerlifter, and she was just saying, "Oh man, I can't stand all these fit chicks." Like you know, like rallying. I'm like, "Yeah, you know, oh, listen, yeah, like they post these ass shots. They by themselves. They're doing all these things for money. Man, I would ne- if I became popular, I would never do that." And it's one of those things. Why do you think? that so many people, when it comes to power, they're attracted to power once they attain power, that it becomes this thing that they can't control and they right. become just like everyone else. And if mm-hmm. you could avoid that, I think that's when you could truly ascend. Anyways, she, she talked all this crap about these influencers, cool, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward two years, she's built up, powerlifting popped off on Instagram. It's now become more relevant. She had 100,000 followers. What do I see her promote, Alan? Basically a fit tee. And yep. she was one of the people that was the most against it. And so the, the thing I would phrase for everyone else is you, until you've been tempted with actual money mm-hmm. for endorsements or other things, <clears throat> you don't know one, how the average person will respond. It's kind of like until shit hits the fan, you don't know someone's true character. And if someone can go through that process, and that's why there's a gradual a weeding out process, as you said, when it comes to YouTube, guys, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Scott Herman because we're kind of in the same, you know, starting class of when we started producing content. If you can resist selling out in so many different ways, I think then you become truly dangerous because your thoughts are independent. And so for some people, it's it's hard to differentiate when it's not a a simple solution. It's, it's complex because it's a problem where it's like, well, this person's also an entrepreneur. They're trying to do this. It's multifaceted as opposed to black and white. Like, this guy's good. This guy's bad. And people all too often, not, you know, gravitate towards that thinking. You know, you brought you brought up Herman. Like he's he's busy doing his like Red Ross imitation right now. You know, like he's he's very very, very much trying to be enraged. Um, yeah. I oh yeah, that. yeah. No. I see that. I think I kind of funny. I'll send him a bill in the mail for the fucking stick. But um, yeah. Uh, he he recently his his last video. I I you quote quote uh, Brad a lot too, like the Brad Show. Sure, right? Yeah. Brad Schoenfeld, yeah. What do yeah. you think about what do you think about Herman fucking that up? <laughs> oh, did he? Did he? Oh, Brad Schoenfeld. Did he mispronounce yeah. his name or did he? No, he 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 like misread it. He he misread the fucking. Like, oh, he, like, do- he like dogged him and oh. he didn't know what he was fucking talking uh, about. Like, yeah, that's so I think. Uh, but so, you kind of been in the middle, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I'll say is I think as educators, we have a responsibility to admit when we're wrong. And that's maybe one of the other things um, we said, hopefully, I mean, yeah. I, I think in the first place, Alan, people are too afraid of criticism. OK, oh, yeah. honestly. And I think I think it's good. I think YouTube in a way can make you better. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, I got haters. I'm like, you don't have haters, man. You have a hundred followers or you don't have haters. Maybe people are generally giving you a critique of something they don't enjoy when it comes to your content. So I actually have one ear to the ground and listen up. Um, but I think the role of an educator is also to admit when they're wrong and not be infallible where they're, it's my way or the highway. And so one thing I'd say is I've kept some of the videos. I mean, some are just so outdated minor things I'm not comfortable with that I'll unlist those, but all videos are either unlisted, unlisted, they're not on private, or I keep some of the ones that are factually incorrect to show like, hey, this is the process, man. We, mm-hmm. we want to keep going towards becoming more and more knowledgeable. And I think in the instance of someone 
like Brad Schoenfeld, who is just an absolute stud when it comes to hypertrophy research and everything, context is key for a lot of things that he's publishing. He's publishing over 100 studies. Um, in terms of the relevance of an individual and the greater context of things that he's saying. And we kind of live in a headline generation where people just want to read maybe the abstract. They don't want to read his full insight. They don't want to read his book like Max Muxel plan to see what he's actually saying. And so sometimes things can get misrepresented. And I'm always cautious of that. Yeah. I mean, that's, the, I do like, I try to do a lot of research before I fucking dog on somebody you yeah. know? And because, because I, I do realize like where it's at, like, Especially as the following grows, I see that like if I if somebody's name comes out of my mouth, yeah. I mean I it, it better be correct or it's me, you know, because then I look stupid, right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, for, to a to a great degree, I've picked the fucking easier ones, like you know, like when you don't know the difference between a deadlift or a mini deadlift, I can pretty much call that shit out, you know. Right. But when it comes to study the studies and stuff like that, I leave that shit to James, and or, or I'll consult with James because <laughs> yeah. we are good friends. And the reason being is I don't like I think one of the huge issues that a lot of the OG YouTubers have is they don't realize the shit they don't know. Yeah, like, they really don't like I, I, I have this phrase like stay in your motherfucking lane. Like I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about being strong and working at you know, very basic working out, working out with intensity and fat loss and, and, yeah. and, and get and helping people with uh, with food behaviors because I'm a, a certified a, a food addiction coach. But. I stick to my wheelhouse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people are like, why don't you talk about this? Like, Cause I don't fucking know about it. Like, you know, like, I mean, I, I simply don't like, I, you know, I don't put, I don't put up squat tutorials. First of all, how many, how many squat tutorials does YouTube need? I mean, uh, you know, apparently you know, one more from me is not going to fucking be great. You know, like yeah. it's really, really not. I actually do still, I, I either send people, uh, Jeff's or I send people who still Alan thralls, the, uh, the guys from Cal, uh, uh, Cali movement. Uh, the calisthenics guys, the squat yeah. tutorial is probably the best I've ever fucking seen. It's amazing, you know. Yeah. But how does it like the repeat with the repeating of content and stuff like that mm -hmm. over and over and over again? I've I've noticed that you will have, have will evolve your opinion. I also think yeah. that that's a difference between you and some of these other old old school guys. Like when you you're at like what you're at like eight hundred thousand right now, right? There yeah. are some people that you came up with that are still like at a hundred. Like I was kind of shocked they're like at one hundred fifty thousand. You know, like. Sure. I, I don't understand how that works because technically, and they're still putting out content, you know, you would think yeah. it would, it would, it would generate, you know, do you think that part of it is like the, the YouTube algorithm has gotten so sick of the same type of fitness people that they're, they're flagging it down because there was a big thing for a while where I noticed that if you put bodybuilding in the title, uh, any type of bodybuilding or anything like that, like it, like the video did shit, yeah. like shit, shit. So do you think it's YouTube or do you think the audience is, we've, we've done a good job or YouTube, you guys have done a good job of educating the audience enough where some of the just normal bro shit is out. Like, what do you think is the reason why some people are just still trying to put out content but just leveling off? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I think that is a multifaceted answer. I, I don't propose to have the full scoop. I would say it's a few things. I do think the algorithm is a factor. I think a large factor, Alan, would be that there's so many entrants into the market mm -hmm. over the last eight years, and there's less people entering the fitness space, viewers, than before. And what I mean when I say that, if we talk about the real progenitors of YouTube fitness that made it pop off would be when Muscle Workout, the Hodge twin. Yeah. Um, and then from there, it kept snowballing and more and more people. And then there's more niches. You had guys like Seth Strength Camp that came out for parallel lifting or just overall strength content. A few other people, Alan Thrall, as you said. And it kept growing as more people. And I think right now, it's reached a saturation point. And as such, there's only so much of one type of particular content an audience can watch. Let's say there's 4 million people in the pool that will watch a YouTube fitness video every single month. So there's 4 million potential people. Right. Well, if there's 4 million people and there's only, let's say, 100,000 new entrants every single month, eventually when people, you know, fitness is a journey, maybe they do it for a handful of years. I remember my homies when I started training at the University of Windsor. From that time, there's probably six or seven of us, Alan, and now a decade later, there are only myself and another guy, well, two people, sorry, uh, and the other guy is a business owner. He has his own gym. That he runs and that's the general trend so i think part of it is people falling out of love with fitness i think it's not as many entrants i think people also don't try and evolve when it comes to their content and you mentioned something that's important knowledge being domain specific and i think one of the things that i try to do differently over time is realizing the limits of my own knowledge not you know 
have that Dunning Kruger effect and try and get other people to talk about things that I'm not as well versed in or to talk about the people that actually conducted the study. So guys like Brad Schoenfeld, or where it came to strength, Greg Knuckles, and try and continue to evolve. Um, I think for some people, they get complacent. I think they get complacent, Alan, content creators. So I'm talking about content the onus being on content creators because I think you always need to take personal responsibility before it's like, man, YouTube's fucking with me. You know, it's like, okay, like, wait a second here. You know, this is the opportunity that we all have. Well, I'd um, seen, I'd, I'd seen a few videos like that where like, you know, YouTube, it's YouTube and it's not blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I, and a few of the old OG guys made videos like that where I was just like, and at the time, that's when I was fucking like really growing. I was like, yeah, it's not YouTube. You know, like yeah. it, it's absolutely not like if it, it's, allows me to say fuck every other word and still pushes me. Yeah. You know, it's it's in your delivery. You know, I, I think that if you, you touched on a huge thing. I've said it before. A lot of these guys just they, they act like they have to be an expert in everything. No. It's fucking sad. Uh yeah. to me. Like they they've most of these guys have bought into their own hype to the point where it's it became less about helping people and putting fitness content out, which I think that that's one of the reasons why you're still very doing very very good because you're very much in that process still too. But yeah. it came about them. <clears throat> Here's what I'm eating today. Here's what I'm doing today. Like, I I don't know. Like, it's one of the weird things. Like, people ask me to do like a day in the life video. Like, wh why would you fucking want to? It would be, literally be like me asking my wife where my keys are at every five minutes. Yeah. Sitting talking to clients. I go work out. You know, scream at myself for a while, and then fucking do more clients. Like it's yeah. like sitting eating like eating over the sink. And she, like, you know, I, I don't know. Like the when I first started seeing these things come out, and don't get me wrong. I'm sure several of them have extraordinary lifestyles. Like I think Christian Guzman probably has an extraordinary lifestyle. Yeah. You know, like the only time I've ever really thought he was, it was kind of funny with him was like the one time he like traded into Ferrari because he didn't want to be materialistic and he bought like a $90,000 Range Rover. Like, yeah, you hit that one on the nail. Yeah, man. But, but he's kind of, the earth. Yeah, but he does have a probably a pretty extravagant lifestyle. So yeah. watching him wake up looking like a supermodel, fucking, you know, I, I get that. And I can see where yeah. the appeal is for that. But then you get the 120,000 subscriber YouTube guy that, you know, <laughs> He's he's filmed his two hundred fifty fifth, you know, follow me around for the day video. Like, yeah. the, why do you think people are going to tune into that shit? You know, like, I, I, so I think, um, oh man, I'm I'm going to say the wrong name of the book. I think it's called not the age of narcissism. It's from about 35, 40 years ago. It's a fantastic read, but all about just our inner narcissistic qualities. And I mm -hmm. think YouTube plays into that where people oh, yeah. want to talk about themselves. And I've actually tried to keep myself my personal life as private as i can because I don't, I don't give a shit about that if i'm not personally interested in my own life to right. that extent why would i be and i think i think showing lifting journeys it's a little bit different and that's why i actually shout out because i do like alan thrall is someone that i will state publicly that i think his content is going to continue to be good because i see a lot of things that we're talking about the self-improvement his editing mm -hmm. game he shoots all his own stuff yeah. um and his journey but also showing him being a business owner, that's a cool, like, kind of, yeah. once again, I, I like supporting small businesses. I like supporting entrepreneurs. And he's not trying to over-glamorize things. Interesting enough about Christian, and that's what's crazy, is I remember that Christian used to leave co genuine comments on my channel. And he was a nice guy in person. I actually think that Christian, and it's interest, this is a distinction, is that someone's content and their character could be different or they're not necessarily unified I think he knows the algorithm. I think oh, yeah. he oh, has God, the yeah. 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 Like, I like Christian as a person. When I've met him and I've interacted with him, some of his content, and, you know, I, I will say this, not about him, but about that lifestyle in general, is that there's a lot of people that are content to be followers, right? Where they want to they want to associate this sexy idea when it comes to fitness. They want the easy choice. Well, if I do this, I can get the girl. I can get the car. I can get the gym. I could be a multimillionaire. Everyone's going to want to try and idolize me. And that's when it becomes the cult of narcissism can become dangerous. And sometimes I think that's what's good about some of the critique channels uh, yeah. like yourself is holding people accountable. Sometimes I you uh, and there's no one in particular I'm thinking when I say this. It could turn a little bit into a witch hunt where I'm like, man, now, okay, now you're just being a hater. So it's like everything oh, else. Oh, dude, I fucking, yeah. I, uh, there's been several times for me it's gotten personal. Oh, it, with it, you? Oh, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I, yeah. I, I'm the first one to admit it. No. Um, I don't talk to him anymore, but I, like at one point in time, uh, I was making video, you know, videos about Scrappy, I called, um, about Lobliner, and he said something about my fucking parents. And I was like, oh, fucking, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And we, we, we squashed after that, and then he fucked up again, and I don't talk to him anymore. But um, yeah. 
But uh, you, 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 that's just weird, man. Like, see, that's I, I, don't, I my the, personal the fuck up, the fuck up thing is people yeah. say shit about me all the time. My mother yeah. was almost dying in the hospital when he said it, and that's, I just yeah. fucking blew. I mean, it just fucking yeah. blew up all over me. I, like, I would have fucking, yeah. I was happy he was states away. I can more than understand that, man. That's just it's, it's just weird. Like, why yeah. would you ever do? Anyways, yeah. Yeah, and I, I so it's shit like that. Where and I try and like now that was when I was earlier on on YouTube. Now mm -hmm. people say shit about me all the time. You know, I mean, like, and, and, you know, I'm just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some of it I find fucking hilarious. You know, yeah. like, um, right before I lost the weight, people were calling me saying I looked like Uncle Fester. And I was having, like, I was having <laughs> shirts. Right. I was having shirts made up with Uncle Fester on it. To nice. Like, I, oh, you, know, yeah. you can't laugh at yeah. yourself. You know, who can you laugh at? You know, because and I, I try to be very rude, funny, you know. Right. And a lot of people get really fucking butt, butt hurt. Like they... Like you say something about somebody that they they idolize on YouTube, I've got yeah. death threats, shit in the mail. Like I mean, I have a PO box now for a fucking reason. Like because people yeah. look up my address and send me fucking letters. You know. Yeah. Uh, I never got one. I knew one YouTuber that got one in his mailbox without a postage stamp, and I, that never happened to me because that means they dropped that motherfucker yeah. off. So that's a little fucking crazy. But um. No. Yeah. I've had uh, Alan. I've had minor stalker stuff. Um. One thing I'll say, yeah, and then I had actually, there was this person that uh, put my head on, uh, made basically made a video insinuating that I was responsible for 9-11, and I was like, nice, dude. Gee, like, that's, fucking that's Christ, a good one. Sure? Yeah, no joke. Yeah, yeah, send it to me via Vimeo. Um, just some people that I think people want to try and cause a, cause a react out of you, and actually, mm -hmm. not to get too personal, but Alan, I could tell... One, it's how someone brings himself up, but yeah. you like you know just your upbringing and so forth, where you got a, a, a good focus and you got thick skin it's probably honestly yeah. mom loving you a lot like i could say my my mom loved me too damn much yeah. um and that's the thing is that when you ask me it's like how do you deal with this like man i i grew up with my mom not saying like you could do anything it's like oh you want to become fast at sprinting get your ass to the track yeah. let's go sprinting and we're going to do that so it's like you have to develop a thick skin for all this stuff and realize that at the end of the game uh, at the end of the day for a lot of people one it's a game but two we're in this process of self-improvement and yeah. if you can't take a little criticism yeah. Oh my God! It's like the the the, the calisthenics. The calisthenics guys are interesting people, and I'm friends with yeah. a bunch of them now. But I made a made a couple of videos about Chris Harrier, and I mean, yeah. I, I think he's a hack. You know, I yeah. mean, he, you know, he, I personally try to, as YouTube goes, I've tried to incorporate little bits and pieces of everybody I've seen, like mm -hmm. even people that I've ripped on, like for yeah. real. I, I try to incorporate if it's not completely fucking dangerous. Yeah. Uh, I try to incorporate some of their training. So I and I've always done plyometrics and cal calisthenics. I do jump training. I'm actually going to release a jump training uh, program. You know, yeah. and you know he, he like I've I've always been amazed by this. If you get called out by a channel and it's not valid at all, ignore it. Yeah, fucking <laughs> ignore like this. Like he he left this long tirade, and I was like, you just gave me four videos to make. You fuck. I'm like you know, why, why would you why would you tank your own channel like that? You know, like of course he's going to do well because he does ads and everything like that, but. Yeah. I basically said, like, because he was talking about spot fat, fat reduction and stupid shit. Like, yeah. shit that's just dumb, you know? And by this point, it's a given. Like, if you made that mistake a decade ago and yeah. all your knowledge came from muscle magazines, yeah. okay, but the, as the standard of fitness IQ goes up, then right. you, you need to do your homework, as you said. And that brings up an interesting point, because now, with the way studies are, mm. because studies can be purchased, right? And, there, yeah. and or there's, you know, there's... It's it's sad that two things get to be called studies when one has like a sample group of like a hundred thousand people and one has a sample group of like fifteen. Yeah. You know, like I mean, it's it's sad. Like right the the spot fat reduction thing. I keep seeing people like, well, there's been studies that show that it's possible. You know, not to the point like you're not going to be able to like I'm I'm not going to get fat off of my arm by just doing curls. You dumb fat. Right. So like yeah. they were trying to say it's upper lower body. A good portion of that had to do with blood flow. You know, all sorts yeah. of shit. And again, it was like the sample size was like 68 people. That has changed so much because when you guys first started, a study was a fucking study. You know, yeah. like it was absolutely, it, it meant it was fucking real, period, yeah. right? Now it can be just total bullshit. Like, I mean, yeah. it, how how do we educate our audiences to learn the difference? Because I'd see yeah. YouTubers not understanding the fucking difference. Sure. Like, sure. I mean, it's really bad. And it's unfortunate because we have people with... But that will put doctor in front of their name and they'll speak on something that's factually incorrect. Yeah. And they're t and they'll say it's from a study. So now they have doctor in front of their name and it's a study. No. And it it might not be what their doctorate is in. 
You know, sure. like, yeah. uh, like I have family members that are, that are PhDs, they're doctors. They don't know shit yeah. about fitness, you, yeah. know, but they, you know, at all, you know, but so, you hit the, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, where are you going to fail? Well, I was going to ask you, how, how do we educate our audience? So the thing that we have to be careful of is guru worshiping, which we've all been guilty of where we find someone where we like their content, uh, verifiable information, and then we follow everything that they say rather than taking a look at the data. I, I think it's hard, and I agree with you, in the sense that there's been a slight bastardization of science or hashtag science where people will use it. Well, a very good point you brought up about your family members, PhD, knowledge is domain specific. Yeah. If I'm a doctor, but I have never done strength training at all, Mm -hmm. I know nothing about strength training, right? right? I have a general, if I'm a, a GP, general right. practitioner, totally different things. Mm -hmm. In the second case, however, we said studies being purchased, unfortunately for most people, just because, you know, we want the easy answers. Mm -hmm. Dissecting a study takes a little bit of work. The confidence interval, it the really sample does. size is a cross-sectional, like so many different variables to take a look at. How does it fit in? How, how many variables were controlled? Um, there was one recently, and that's why actually I'm going to give a shout out real quick. I'm not paid by them. I don't have an endorsement by them. I do support their work. Uh, monthly application in strength sports, Greg Knuckles, uh, Eric Helms, Eric yeah. Trexler, and Mike Zordos, where they, they take a look yeah, at about a dozen studies a month. They just dissect it and make it generally applicable for people, easy to understand. They give you the context. So that's very important. Um, yeah. So I don't, I, don't think, I don't think everyone, Alan Nisa suddenly is like, yeah, man, hashtag science, learn about confidence intervals, right. learn about statistics. Is they should be wary and this is the heuristic I would say for most people out there is what's the skin in the game for that person or what's the financial motivation? Where are they coming from? Is someone talking about spot reduction and this study and then they want to sell you something about stock, uh, uh, spot reduction or they open to criticism? So if you take a look at individuals, right? No one's infallible. If you have information that can be questioned, it should be questioned and you can have a discourse on it. So if someone's putting forth that they have the one answer and Andy Galpin said this, um, on a podcast, and it was very good, where he said, I think it's Malcolm Gladwell wrote the seven steps to being a charlatan, essentially, which is framing that the industry, like they don't want you to know, right? There's something, in, and that's unfortunately one guy I will call out because, you know, I thought it's not as harmful. He's no longer with them, but Mike Chang, six pack shortcuts. Oh, my, my arch nemesis, he's one of the few people where, you know, I could be a pretty forgiving guy in ways where I, I think, okay, what's the utility here, net benefit, blah, blah, blah. I'm also, who am I? I? I don't want to be throwing stones from a glass house, but fuck right. that guy, you know, or, or fuck that content. It was, it was yeah. very bad. Um, oh, so misleading, what, misleading, fucking totally. It was, that, yeah. Some of the most horrible content. Like the fucking, yeah. I, yeah. you know, I'm, 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 friend, I'm good friends with Elgin and just yeah. Elgin ripping him apart was just fucking glorious. Yeah. It was some of my, some of my favorite. You know? Yeah, it was a long time coming for him uh, with with Mike Chain because you could buy. What's interesting, Alan, is you could also buy likes, and that's it, it's it's such a huge thing to unpack. I'd say in short summary for most people is to be okay with questioning creators, mm -hmm. questioning gurus, taking a look more at the source, taking a look at how many studies have been published, going towards people that try and be as unbiased as possible. So I brought up mass when it comes to supplement. A very good one is Examine.com as an example. Yeah. Where yeah. You take they, they reference the studies, they give you the context once again. So how does this fit into the larger picture? Mm -hmm. And then they go from there. So I think the self-education of a consumer is important because the difference now is that the knowledge asymmetry of the past has been erased. You know, like yeah. 30 years ago, Al, we had the muscle magazines and they're telling what to do. This oh, yeah. worked for the best bodybuilder. Why is it not going to work for you? Well, that's why, I mean, that's, that's why I used to eat like fucking three dozen egg whites a day. <laughs> nice. It was, was, was muscle and fitness, you know? Oh, yeah. Cause then I was going to be like as big as like road warrior Hawk, you know, like, <laughs> like, cause that was my goal. Like my goal was to fucking be, be built like a professional wrestler. So, yeah, man. Uh, but I, I find it uh, egregious that like, it's almost like those publications are being rewritten almost in, in, in some of, some of the content right now. And that's, I think that's just so important. Like it's, it's kind of sad that people, people also equate like how a person looks to their knowledge, you know, yeah. And that's that, that's to a certain degree that's tough. I you know, uh, Alan Thrall actually had a good video about this mm -hmm. not too long ago where he said, you know, what's it like to own a business in fitness? Well, you give up your training, you know, for yeah. the most part. Like I, I don't like I trained really, really hard last year. Yeah. And I still train very intensely, but my training is different. I go to the gym like maybe five, ten, five days a week, but I have a pull up bar right here and I have the fucking you know torture rack behind me and fucking shit like that, you know. Yeah. And 
my training is very different because I run a, I run businesses. You know, we run a coaching business. We run the websites. We run all that shit, right? So it's very different. And he did a great video on that. But the people that stand up in front of the camera and like, look how shredded I am. You can look just like me if you follow my program. Like, yeah. you, you, you've been working at that shit for 15 fucking years. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you, 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 prob you probably have, like, you're probably orthorexic. You probably have a horrible relationship with food. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I always equate it to Jeff, like my you know, Jeff Cavalier. Yeah. You know, when you sit down to eat with Jeff, he, he's going to eat the same shit. Like, yeah. like he, like I eat because I love food. He, yeah. It's like very, it's very, very, very mechanical for him. Like he can go like all day and be like, okay, we'll just get a bar. And I'm like, fuck yeah. no, I need fucking food. You know. Yeah. Uh, and it's not really like in the average person's lifestyle. And I, I find that to be where we're missing the boat right now because we are getting to the point right now that for a lot of people. It's the for a while it was bodybuilding, but now like all of a sudden strength, the you know, power thing got to be so big where I was like, if you can't deadlift six hundred pounds, you're not shit, motherfucker. Like, you know how <laughs> heavy six hundred pounds is? Like, uh, it's it's something that you don't see very often at all. Yeah, you just don't, you know. And the huge lifts we see and all like that, I've you you lift on camera, but I don't see you doing anything fucking stupid. Has yeah. it ever like been in your head? Have, have you ever like filmed something, watched it, be like, no? <laughs> I'm, oh, not, no, I'm not no. putting that up. No, nah, man, you got to be. So I think ultimately when you chase and to quote someone else now, Van Halen, which I'm a big fan of David Lee Roth had from it. They released that 2012 album with different kind of truth. But I like the line that he says in the song as uh, is where he says love of the craft or love of the money. And I think if you're comfortable with the content from the outset that you're creating, then you won't run into those moral dilemmas or quagmires where it's like, oh, like, should I be? You know, sometimes, let's say for comedy, Alan, like if I do a parody mm -hmm. and, you know, it's a shit impression, I'm not an actor. I don't know what I'm doing. That, I'm like, oh, let me, let me do another take. But when it comes to actual lifting in the gym, no, because the, the – and you, you said something, and I think what's good about your content and your channel is you give also some legitimacy – that some of the things that you're saying where for some people they think you do, oh man, it's a free ride, right? Mm -hmm. so, oh, wait, oh, wait a second. Like you just do, you guys just sit in front of camera talk. Yeah, okay. sort of, but there's, a, there, but there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Like the, the, how hard you try to keep your business afloat and to grow it. I think most people would be surprised. Oh, and yeah. so, and when you said Alan, just um, about your uh, training suffering, that's a unspoken truth. Oh, yeah. For so many people, and that's why I, you know, I'll just say it here, and it, it's uh, cool to say it is I've been trying to open or planning to open a gym um, for about 14 months, and it's taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, seeing over 150 places, like applications, all those things, in addition to the things that we're doing. And so I've been waiting for some of the training goals, and it's been a little bit unfortunate as a result of that. But it's it's secondary to the knowledge you're trying to communicate, and you shouldn't just be your lift. You shouldn't just be your looks. Your knowledge should stand on its own, and that's why the best intersection is usually the people that walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I, that's what I, I see that too. Like I, to me, you know, the the selling of of a, of a lifestyle just sitting in front of a camera. To be real, people, just just so you know, if you do that, if you want to be a YouTuber and make your money on YouTube, you better have a backup plan. We were just talking yeah. about this off camera. Like you, yeah. YouTube, any money I make off YouTube when I do get monetized, any money I make off YouTube is sent to other invest or something like that. Like, yeah. you know, anybody that depends on YouTube revenue is a fucking idiot. You know, yeah. um, that'd be a good conversation, Alan, maybe uh, for your chat. I don't know if you've ever posted it. just yourself talking about being an entrepreneur. I always find that stuff interesting. Um, I try to make, I try to keep it very much not about me. Sure. I, I, I really do. I try to keep it very, very much not, uh, you know, on the lives. It's one thing I'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about situational stuff, but yep. when I make videos, I try to keep it very, very much not about me, you know, yep. And I, I think that that's one of the reasons why the channel's grown. Because in reality, like, I, I'm just a dude. Like, you know, I, I, I'm I'm a guy that like I can be, I can be a horrible asshole. Like, I mean, I know I can. Like, I like I've I've even like looked back at some of my videos. Like, now I'm just being mean. You know, like <laughs> I look back at some of my Tyrone videos. I'm like, fuck, I'm really mean to this kid. But then he yeah. does something stupid, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm good with it. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and. Like I, there's people that are popular that I don't like. I think that that's refreshing for people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, just because they're popular doesn't mean they're right. 
just because you know anything like that. I just I find it crazy. Like I see Herman in the fucking comments right now. I think he's a little tweet that I fucking mentioned his name. But oh, did he say that? What up, Scott? Uh, I can't I can't see the uh, okay. the feed chat. I'm mean, because I'm just focusing. I'm just focusing. Alan, I'm focusing on you. Oh, and that's also when you said the uh, uh, TRX in the back uh, drop. I was going to make a joke. Do you know David Carradine or no? I do not know him. No. no. Okay, uh, I'll leave it at that. Go on. No, very funny. Um, I no, I I actually like the TRX. TRX is good. That's yeah. actually no, that's good. good bands. It's good. Um, no, it's uh, it's a so he is from Kill Bill, Quentin Tarantino's movie. He's right. been in a lot of stuff, but his Thailand uh, autoerotic asphyxiation, where is a belt to the. Uh, Against the door, you know, against the doorknob. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it has a dual purpose. And my, That's my, what, yeah. My, my <laughs> wife and I talk about it all the time. So, <laughs> yeah. so, healthy yeah. relationship. Yeah. Healthy. Very healthy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to me, I think that that's where, I mean, that's where it goes. Like, I, I'm not afraid to say something about, if, 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 if people all of a sudden hate it, people hate it. You know, like, yeah. I, you know, I can speak factually about the content I make most about, which is weight loss and stuff like that. I speak factually about that. And when I talk about other people's exercises that I think are dangerous, I make yeah. sure that they're dangerous and I'll talk about it. And that's, e to me, that's easy pickings. Like when you see somebody on a Bozu ball fucking benching, you know, whatever, all that stupid shit. Yeah. Like, Bozu balls, like, wow, I, we even have one here which at, at the house, which is, you know, and we use it how it's properly supposed to be used. But when you, it's like a, this trainer thing, like this certified personal trainer thing. Like the very first thing they do when they have somebody that they start to train, they put them on a Bozu ball because they need disability. Yeah. If they can't do a squat, don't fucking have them squat on a Bozu ball, you dumb fuck. You know, it's yeah. so bad. Like, unfortunately, anybody can <laughs> be a personal trainer and anybody with a body can be a YouTuber. Yeah. Like anymore. You know, yeah, they have next to, they, they need next to no qualifications at all. Right. Yeah. And to me, I'm not talking about certifications or like that, but if you can't listen to the quality of their content and think, wow, that this person is very fundamental and basic, then you might be looking the wrong way. If somebody's trying to sell you on the tricks, yeah, that's where I find it to be the, the problem. Because for the most part, you know, like you get to work out for a living. You know, I, yeah. I still get to work out for a living. Yeah. People, the stuff we probably do in a gym is going to be different than how I'm going to train somebody that's just like, you know, got the nine to five and got three <laughs> kids and trying to get home, right? I find I find that to be the content that's kind of missing almost like because it's not flashy and people don't want to see it. You know, people want that trick, right? Yeah. What is well, the what is the weirdest thing you've seen on YouTube? Yeah. Some weird. I've seen some weird shit. Um, I think Alan people attempting to stand out, and as a result of them attempting to stand out them saying things that are just flat out false kind of what you're saying about the weird trick so yeah. the red the mike chang's red drink probably probably the most offensive video i saw was when he was eating a sushi with a fork oh, and he was talking with his mouth open just mm -hmm. chomping down on that shit and i i thought how uncouth this individual is just how just the way he's presenting himself i was thinking it's like all right so I bet your marketing guy, because fun fact, I think a lot of people don't know this. Mike Chang was the face. He wasn't the mm -hmm. creator of Six Pack Shortcuts. No. Um, and so you, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm just trying to imagine the scene before the video. All right, man, we want you to be relatable because people respond to relatability. They want to see a shredded guy eat food they think that they can't eat. And then three, for once, we're not going to cut what you say because you ramble and you're incoherent. We're just going to let it roll because it shows authenticity and they're like yeah man this is a good video and then they release it and it's just garbage i think i think when you have a disconnect from uh, cat williams talks about your star player or he says that i am a cat williams fan mm -hmm. and you you end up you think like oh this, this is gonna pop off i'm gonna make this content and people are gonna love it instead of what's the utility of this that's the question i think i ask myself or try and ask myself i'm you know i made a bunch of mistakes but what's the utility of this is this useful right will this help people that's mm -hmm. the, that's the start and then we go from there <clears throat> I see. I, I totally, I totally agree with that. Like the problem, I think, is you know people bastardizing the basic lifts. Like mm. this is no shit, dude. I when I was still training people in person, I trained elderly elderly people on the basic lifts because yeah. it's literally oh, yeah. a it's a literally a simulation of an active daily living. Yeah. Like a deadlift is basically, especially um, like a, a hex bar deadlift is uh, like yeah. you're picking something up off the fucking ground. A squat yeah. is sitting down. Like you need to put stuff up over your head. You need to pull yourself up. You know, pull ups. You know, overhead press. I don't even bench press is not even all that important in relative terms to for you know active daily living. <clears throat> but the 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 thing I the thing I 
wonder about is like we get all these trick exercises as if they're gonna fucking do something. Mm. You know, like the 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 the, the multitude of band exercises and the fucking you know reverse double triple banded on the fucking squat like i have never put a band on a squat like, yeah. i i i'm not saying that they they I mean, that they don't work but i've never done it i've used chains occasionally but i've never never done the bands like i just i'm like why <laughs> i don't i don't so understand I, like if, if yeah, technically if yeah. you put if you use chains as long as they're the same distance apart from the from the median of the bar from the middle of the bar yeah. Yeah. they're going to weigh the same but the elasticity of the bands could be completely fucking different on each side. Like yeah. it, no, so it's it, a, that's a good that's a good minor point just for strength enthusiasts. The strength curve being different on a band, that elasticity yeah. was actually exponential. How it goes up versus a chain like a chain is twenty pounds is twenty right. pounds. But I think novelty, Alan, I put forth, and that's why I asked you before we began if you were a trainer before, because I see that where there's a vetting out process, and maybe one of the biggest differences. That I see with YouTube content creators, they don't come from having a professional background. I'm not right. saying you got a PhD or this that. Right. But there's a few years trained. You know, I've I've trained people for a decade. You've worked in the industry, health, nutrition, training people right. before. So it comes from a real lived-in experience. Um, and I think maybe the answer, I don't know how you feel, would be novelty is partially why people want to gravitate. And I think they want. I think I think they think in their head that lifting is supposed to be this joyous act where every time it's, Oh my God, it's so fulfilling where I was having so much fun. It's like, sometimes you just got to do the damn thing and understand it's a part of life. And that movement is just a part of being human. Yep. And that the process of getting better is what you should focus on rather than the novelty or enjoyment of a single act or a single session. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, I agree. Like the, the, the issue like fall, revolves around where, when people just want the flash, they don't understand. Like, I'd rather somebody work out at like sixty percent capacity for twenty years than yeah. them work out at one hundred and ten and burn themselves mm -hmm. out in a month. I say that all the fucking time. I really do. Um, like, I, I people reach out to me about my programs because I I do sell programs and like they'll be yeah. like, well, you know, which one of your programs will help me lose seventy five pounds? Do you know anything about the basic lifts? No, don't buy any of them. Yeah, like, my programs are not for for beginners or for intermediates. You know, like. Yeah. You need to be proficient in the basic lifts. I don't even want you to like I, I it's in the it's in the, the nomenclature of it because it'll bury you and it's not healthy. Like I, that's the last I, I got in this to help people, you know, yeah. and I find that to be where people just get lost with it. Like people are, are willing to try to like stand out more than they are willing trying to help people. Mm. And we're, we're supposed to be we're supposed to be fitness professionals, you know, like and that's the thing. That's like you and like you can see when somebody knows what they're doing and is in it for the, to actually help people. You can definitely tell the difference between the OG YouTubers that want to be famous, make money and help people. It's like yeah. three different things. Famous people will sacrifice helping people and money just yeah. to be just to be mentioned. Right. The yeah. person that just wants to be make money they're after every little scam. They're asking their audience. Do you like this video? Do you like that video? Do you like this video? Which would you like? What would you like me to see me do? That drive, that shit drives me crazy. Like, I'm, do what you feel like is right. Don't ask your audience because your audience came to see you. Yeah. You know, like we were talking before. You know, so like why the fuck would, would would you ask them? You are supposed to guide them. You know, yeah. and then there's the people that just want to help people. People that just want to help people, oftentimes sacrifice the popularity and the money just yeah. to help people. You know, because they put out content like free advice and content instead of charging for it. You know, not that I don't. You know. I put, I put out as much weight loss free content as I can for a lot of what we do. People hire us to actually help them build skills like accountability skills. It can't be done on video. It has to be yeah. done on an individual basis, you know, and I just, I, I wonder like why each one evolves. So there's the people that want to make money. There's people who want to be famous. And then there's mm -hmm. people like you that want to help people. Yeah. Uh, why, why, why do they evolve like that? Because I've seen them all start out from the yep. same way. Like all you guys That's started right. out the same way, mm -hmm. you know, and back then there wasn't even that much money in it, you know, yep. it, there were, and there definitely wasn't a lot of fame because it wasn't popular. Right. I remember Alan, uh, filming my first few videos. So as a mom and pop gym and, uh, so I was doing it for the client, like once again, for first year and change it's for clients. Um, mm -hmm. but I remember filming the content where them were the rough days. Let me tell you something, uh, where, other trainers or trainers are, you know, 20 years older than me. I'm looking at them like, who the fuck is this kid talking to himself in the camera? And there's no glamour about it. There's no man. Like, we're going to get this brand endorsement. 
I actually, and that's when you said about you having a job before going into YouTube, how that's honestly the way it should be. And you shouldn't count on it as your main income. And I think part of it is intent or purpose. And so I stumbled onto YouTube as opposed to thinking I wanted to be famous. So I think your intent informs everything else. Right. Uh, but one thing I was going to say is I accidentally, and actually shout out to uh, Brandon uh, Campbell. He was the one that told me I didn't have monetization on for my first 50 million views. So <laughs> I didn't even know Alan, which is equivalent for most people. Like it, it, it translates to maybe 70 to a hundred thousand right. dollars, which yeah, like I lost that money, but I didn't even know that YouTube was a viable, not vi- I, viable. I shouldn't say, but a way to earn money. Right. Um, and I was, making content the whole time without knowing that. I think what happens is that people get attracted to the cult maybe of money where it's, it's sexy, it's lucrative, right? It's the thing that is perpetuated a lot in our society where if you want to be respected, if you want this, you need to have money or there's some sort of inner anguish for a lot of people. Training starts partially from insecurity, right? A lot of us, we want to look better. We don't like the way that we look. We don't like the way that we feel. And so we want to try and improve that. But then sometimes the demons in our head grow too big where you have a taste that fame and it hits you. It's like a fame drug and you just want more of it, right? You want want to be then idolized. And I think inside every human is kind of that conflict to some extent. It's whether or not you let that demon take over. And so for some people, it's about what fulfills them. And I think one of the, if I can impart one thing in this video, some of the biggest, let's say, informative moments I had was actually training people that were the people that I thought I wanted to be. So there's a neurosurgeon, there's doctors, there's lawyers, so people that are accomplished, great, doing their craft, loving it, having legitimate professions. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like these, these are the people that I want to have a profession like that, right? Like I'm eight, I'm 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them echoed the same thing about fitness is a journey for them of vitality of rediscovering themselves of who they are the dreams that they had before 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 maybe they conform to their expectations of themselves and so a lot of them said the same thing is that omar you're young do what you love or do what you enjoy because in the end with life a lot of them even the people that were quite accomplished had various regrets regrets of uh, different natures and so I didn't want to live a life that I look back on and oh, man, I really blew that. Like, oh, I can't believe, you know, you're surrounded Tony Montana style, a yeah. uh, pile of cocaine, a lot of money. You're just thinking to yourself, wow, this ain't it. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I fundamentally fucked up someplace, you know, like yeah. that's the thing. Like I've, I, I it's the weirdest thing. Like, cause I, 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 I I'm still, by the way, I'm still going to film in my car, people, but I, yeah. I've just been busy, you know? Uh, but <clears throat> like people are like, you should buy a new car. I'm like, why? I, I'd rather yeah. go on three cruises a year. You know, like yeah. like people people get so caught up in the money of, of shit. I think that it, it it sends an odd message. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and they see YouTube and they and they like I know YouTubers that rent cars for their videos. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, like they actually will either that or they'll lease a car and then they'll rent it out for like three weeks of the month to pay for the lease and then only use it for like a, a week to fucking filming it i think that's fucking egregious it's like first of all it's so misleading you know it, it really is like the only one that i think leads like an interesting lifestyle and shows his money and everything like that i think it's chris jones oh um, man I, I have a soft spot I, for chris i'm a huge fan you know why yeah, i like chris because a lot. he says whatever the fuck he wants yeah. <clears throat> and while i don't always agree with everything chris says he says whatever fuck he wants <laughs> like yeah. he does not give a like it's, i don't find him trying to pander to an audience at all i find him just being himself saying shit and when you watch his content he he's very knowledgeable when it comes yeah. to when it comes to fitness like he really where does he come from alan he comes from being a trainer for a while too and yeah. that's i think one of the the basics man <clears throat> yeah and i mean that's why even though he talks about his lifestyle and everything like that like first of all Congratulations on all the fucking success to Chris Jones. Yeah. Because he literally said, I'm gonna do this and fucking did it. You know? Yeah. I mean, he never it's not it's not like he was like all of a sudden like, I'm just in this to help people and all like that. And all of a sudden, like, by the way, look at my mansion, you know. Um, yeah. he was he was always, always, always the same way. He, he I'm gonna build a business, I'm gonna grind. He sells that lifestyle, and I think it's fucking great because he lives that lifestyle too. Like, I mean, you can tell that he really does grind really hard, takes care of, now he takes care of his baby, you know, all, all sorts yeah. of shit. I, I remember when he, I, I DM'd him, like, you're going to be a great dad. He's like, I'm fucking terrified. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> dude, I said the same thing. I sent him a message, I said, hey, man, congratulations, because I've known now Chris since probably 2013, and he's an example, once again, 
uh, content character, meeting him in person, I, he wears his heart on his sleeve. Yep. We had some very genuine conversations. I like Chris a lot. Yep. I sent him a message about his kid, and he said, "He's like, man, I'm fucking terrified." Yeah. It was his response that he said to <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it, dude. I'm a, I my son's not biological mine, but you, yep. I, mean, I, I met him when he was five. It's the best gift anybody ever gave to me. I never refer to him as anything but my son because he's my son, yep. you know. Yep. And uh, but it's fucking scary. <laughs> I mean, being a parent's fucking scary in today's world. It really is. Like, you're, like oh. and my thing is like, you always feel like you're gonna fuck it up, like no matter what, like. You question every fucking decision, you know. Uh, that, that's a next level responsibility. I, yeah. uh, Alan, just before I forget, I, I, I make mentions of people or things because I never want to try and pretend that these ideas are my own. I want to give a quick shout out to Fortis Fitness, the gym that I go to. The owner Sean, just because he's someone out. Everything that you said, living the damn thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say Sean's financial situation. All I got to say is that he's a smart man. He's been 30 years in the industry. The man drives a 25-year-old truck that's beat to hell. He mm -hmm. rents a one-bedroom apartment in an area of Toronto known as Parkdale, where it rents uh, cheaper, and he lives his life that way. He wears oversized used clothing. His bank account would shock the average person yeah. if they saw it, but he lives the damn thing, and that's that's the guy, right? Because the person, once again, that is not attracted or not beholden to financial considerations other opinions, public opinions, where they care about that is the dangerous person because they're an independent thinker. Right. And, yeah. I, I, and I think that's a lost skill. Like I, 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 re, I, like I say it in multiple videos, but I find it like, I find me having it like, we're about to hit 200,000 200, subscribers, which I'm fucking, yeah. I never like thought we'd get there, right? Yeah. But I think that it's because like how much ridiculous shit is out there that just somebody that just cut, like, I just, I say what the fuck I want. You know, and I say it how I want, and the, sometimes I lean into the swearing a little bit, but I swear a lot. I just fucking yeah. do, you know. I mean, I swore more than you in this interview than you have. Yeah, <laughs> I've been I've been a little shocked. No, yeah. uh, <clears throat> but uh, I just find it to be you know an interesting thing where I think that people got so sick of the cookie cutters and the carbon things and stuff like that. Uh, I, I I try to one take my videos. You know, I really mm -hmm. do, I, uh, and that's a that's a big thing. I just try to make sure I talk. You know, I yes. think that that's one thing that you do really really well. Um, I think when you see dozens and dozens and dozens of cuts in a video, uh, people can say what they want. They, I, I heard one guy, I think it was Brandon Carter, like I added for dramatic effect. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, no, man. <laughs> Shut no. the fuck up. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I've had conversations with you, Brandon. Stop it. But, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, you know, if you can't eloquently speak on it, um, or I'm not that eloquent, but if you can't just ramble it off, you don't know it. Yes. You know, I mean, you don't know it. Like I, I agree if, with that hundred percent. Yeah. If, if we talk about nutrition, I'm, I'm all over it. If we talk about weight yeah. loss, I'm definitely fucking all over it. You know, yeah. if we talk about, you know, uh, West side barbell and, and, and their progressions, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like I, sure. I've, I've barely run West side, you know, I, I, I haven't trained like that, you know, and I wouldn't fucking talk about it. That's, I get that a lot where people are like, you should make a video on this. I'm like, I know nothing about it. Why the, why yeah. the fuck would I make a video about it? So and that's you, what's funny. You'll see Alan, I'll, I'll just say for you is that as your content continues to evolve and you do different things that some people might say like, Alan, why are you going to talk about this? It's like, you should do this, do that. It's like, well, wait a second, man. It's like, I know what I want. I know what I'm comfortable talking about. And this, and these are the topics that I'm going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Therefore, yeah. Oh, I, I definitely stay in my fucking wheelhouse. Yeah. Like there's no, I, 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 I make, I make, I make it a point too. Because yeah. I've seen to like I've blasted people out for not, you know. Yeah. Like I mean, like stay in your motherfucking lane. I I, I say that fairly often, yeah. because people that don't get fucked up, they they really do. Like or they fuck people up, you know. That's when, when you see the, you know, the the kind of charlatan people of, of, of the of the YouTube fitness realm talk about heavy lifting when they don't look like they. It looks like they would get crushed under the fucking yeah. weight they talk about. You know why? Yeah. Why are you? Why are you speaking on that? You know, like yeah. let let somebody that like let Alan for all let let's let uh, Silent Mike or not some but you know I mean let let fucking those people who lift heavy fucking weight talk about it. You know, oh, yeah. I also think though sometimes you know they need to take a look at you know the results of, of of the person's endeavors. You know, and look at the long run of health. I think you do a good job of making sure you don't push the fucking envelope and you look out for your longevity, and that means you're looking out for the longevity of your audience. Yeah. You know, we got, uh, there's several power lifters right now and, and bodybuilders that have really fucking got themselves snapped the fuck up. Oh, and, Alan, it's, it's even worse for the audience. It's even worse than people realize oh, yeah. publicly because a lot of people privately don't want, or sorry, publicly don't want to admit what's happened privately because they think it makes them look weak. But there's so many people that are re in bad places injury wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is not to, not to knock Ronnie Coleman or anything like that, but like, mm -hmm. You know, he's very, very, very in a bad way. 
Um, and I've never made a video on it because I don't know bodybuilding at all. And I don't talk bodybuilding and I'm not going to talk about any of the, the drug use or anything like that. Um, because he's a freak no matter what. And you got to give it to the guy that he did what he wanted to do. I just personally know that he's only like, he's only like four years older than me or three, yeah. like, something like that. He's like 50 something, I think 51 or 52. Um, and if he's that old and while he's like, I don't regret anything. Let's let, let that marinate for about 10 years. You know, yeah. like, uh, because I know this, like I, I very much enjoy being very mobile. You know, yeah. I see people my age, like that I went to high school with and shit like that. And I'm like, what the fuck happened to you? You know, like cause yeah. we, I think as fitness people also, we live in a box. People don't realize how much YouTubers are isolated. Like you, you probably only see fitness people. <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like how, how crazy is, is it to go to the grocery store? And then you look around and you're like, what the fuck happened to these people? Like, <laughs> Like how, how, how do we get so healthy? You don't count your macros, bro. It's like, man, this is a, this is like a single father just trying to pick yeah. up food for, you know, his family. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's, our world is very different. Like we spend a lot of time in front of a camera, a lot of time alone in front of editing, in front of a computer and shit like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the average person uh, that, you know, like watches the content, our lives are very different than that. And I think yeah. that that's something that's not really said. Uh, and when they don't then know your full picture, like I, I've, I've admitted like every injury I have, you know, like mm -hmm. I have arthritis in my right shoulder. I have, you know, I have a fractured vertebrae from when I was like 16 and my mm -hmm. fucking tore my right leg up. The only big lifting injury I had was like, was it two years ago on my birthday? I tore my groin leg pressing of all fucking shit. Oh, yeah. and, and, uh, and that changed like, they were like, well, what happened this and that? Well, you could have done it. I was like, I was stupid. <laughs> I was completely fucking dumb. Like I overloaded the weight because it was my birthday and I had this big fucking ego thing that I lifted heavy weight on my birthday every year. Yeah. I don't do that anymore because it took me to fucking almost cripple myself to yeah. fucking learn, you know? Do you think it's we owe our audiences that type of uh disclosure since you know, since they we're telling them about our about our training schemes, our health and wellness. Do you think that when people don't talk about the injuries they actually have, do you think that's an issue? I do. I do. Uh, so I think when you're a public figure and you withhold certain private information that might be pertinent info for your general population. So Ronnie Coleman, not not slagging on him at all. Yeah. But we all pick our own poison. Right. So I think there's I, I, I think nothing in life or a few things in life are an absolute net positive. There's risks and reward. And you yeah. have to balance that out and determine for you if that works. So we brought up bodybuilding before I met or really started interacting with Eric Helms. It does natural bodybuilding. I was like, ah, bodybuilding, not for me. Like, it's not one of those things. And I could certainly see how it's very unhealthy um, and how it could feed into orthorexia and all those sorts of things. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but for some people, the things that they get out of it are greater than some of the negatives. Same idea with powerlifting, right? Where we, we know this, Alan, from lifting heavy, you know, some of your joints are going to hurt. And you can train as intelligent as you want. But there's a right. simple fact of the matter, a certain amount of pounds under the bar there's the absolute risk kind of tends to go up as you're lifting more and more weight or just over time is a probability game. Cool. But we take these risks with what we do and we have to understand, but I think everyone needs informed consent. Let's say, honestly, when it comes to lifting where it's like, Hey, here's what's going to happen. Here are some likely scenarios. Is this for you? As opposed to saying, man, you know, what like piloting save my life. It's the best thing in the world. I recommend everyone does. It's like, definitely. I love strength training. I will continue to try and lift heavy, but we need people just to understand A, B, C, D. And so I think it is absolutely on all of us to talk about these things. And I never try and be a Debbie Downer because I'm, I'm one of the few uh, folks, I, I'd say that in the strength community that is more public about some of those things. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to wallow in and be like, oh man, like I was dealing with this thing, that thing. It's more, this is part of the process. And let me walk you through it because you have to own all your shit, as you said. And I think right. for some people, they don't want to have any imperfections. So, you right. know, that's kind of social media. Like, it, the Instagram lifestyle, the Instagramification, it's only, I'm only showing the highlights and even the highlights are fabricated. Mm -hmm. but I don't want to show any chink in my armor. Um, and so I think that is an issue. I think strength training, which we both really like, has been so positive in so many ways. I think people being more open, and that's why you mentioned West Side, the West Side documentary, I think would be illuminating for a lot of people to see some of the things that they've gone through, some of those lifters, or the sacrifices they made. And I think the more you know about 
what something takes, the more you have a better picture if that's for you. I, I, I completely agree. Like to me, to me, it's, it's bothersome. Like when you know, like, and I don't, here's the thing. I will never bust out anybody's injuries. Like I'll never out them for them. Like yeah. I, to me, like I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I'm, can be a horrible person. I know I can, but <laughs> that's something where I would not do because that can negatively affect their business and all sorts of shit. Like there's, there's that shit. Yeah. Like, and if they've, if they're not giving, if they're not giving out bad information, I, I won't say anything. I, I bust out. Uh, I, I talk about fucking B shreds injuries every ch every chance I get because like he fucking trains people and fucking fucks himself up all the goddamn time, you know. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> my my issue is if you're gonna hide that shit and like if you're if you if your training hurt you mm -hmm. like, and for you to still be talking to people about it like that's really like that goes beyond negligence. That's like almost yeah. malicious, you yeah. know. Um, and we have enough people that don't like fitness like i think we have way too many people that don't like fitness in an, in an inherently unhealthy society yeah. um i think it's really 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 catastrophic when somebody that has a truck that is trusted by a large audience of people mm -hmm. can do something that might get somebody to turn away from fitness in general yeah. because i don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck if you like calisthenics or if you like fucking swimming or i don't give a fuck what what, any, what you like i just want every i would like for everybody to be healthy everybody to be active because just like yeah. you said Everybody should be active, right? Mm -hmm. And when you you have that one person that's really like really looks up to you, and then they fucking they try your training, and the next thing you know, they they're all fucking snapped up, and they don't come back to anybody. Yeah. They 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 don't trust online training anymore. They don't trust fitness because it hurt, you know. And I think that's really catastrophic. I think that's why CrossFit took such a harsh fucking. Uh, shot for a while because I know plenty of CrossFit trainers that are very good coaches, like yep. very good Olympic lifting coaches. There's a there's a place called Rough House CrossFit in Stanford, Connecticut. We go to every year when we're at Athlete X Live, yep. and the trainers are the, the two people that own the gym are amazing. They both have degrees and they they they're both certified strength coaches too, both uh, the Olympic lifting coaches and CrossFit trainers. You know, but there's also the fucking Joe Schmo that got a fucking weekend thing that doesn't know shit from shit that you know has you know. Uh, 300 pound woman doing fucking snatches her first fucking day, which she's never touched a barbell, you know? Right. And that's how they started t catching so much shit is because they were injuring people at such an incredibly high rate because of just the selling the fucking, the, the, the ideal, you know, instead of being, you know, intelligent about it and saying, well, let's learn to fucking walk before we try to sprint. And yeah. in general terms, I don't know how that's get, that gets fixed because we live in such an immediate society that people want like that people want it to happen now. They want they yeah. want it to happen right then. That's why supplements were, were have, have you know had the niche that they have. And don't get me wrong, I use supplements. Shit, I, I'm wearing a Rising Lab shirt right now. It's Casey Mitchell's brand, and I took his pre workout before I'm before we started talking. My teeth been chattering the whole fucking time. Yeah, um, yeah but I I like it, but I don't. I don't even tell pe people when they're first starting out to use pre-workout. Like if you're going to need, if you can't be excited to get to the gym, you, you're not going to find it in a bottle, you know, yeah. I mean, you're not. If you have to rely on that much external motivation to yeah. get to the gym. Yeah. It's, it's going to be tough. I, I think <clears throat> you come from a place of wanting to help people. And so that's a consideration that's important in that there's so many mechanisms in our society. We're kind of set up to fail, right? We're kind of set up to, to be fat or to eat a lot of food, to be inactive, a lot of these things. So if you create that path or you make it harder for someone to achieve their goal, that's rough. And sometimes when dogma takes over, Alan, where for some coaches, I think actually economic reasons sometimes can explain a lot of different things. And for CrossFit, why did CrossFit explode? multiple variables but one of them is their box um their franchise model mm -hmm. is actually pretty genius where you know to open up a standard gym so to open up a 24-hour fitness whatever franchise agreement you pay this amount it's a huge financial commitment huge. yeah and then to open up a crossfit box five thousand dollars i think you pay five hundred dollars a year in a membership and so you had all these people and then you're given once again the solution where it's like this is the fitness industrial complex we're going to be different from that. So every single person that comes into this facility, we're going to treat the same way. A 300 pound person, as you said, a 130 pound person, a Olympic athlete. It's like, wait a second here. Individualization. Come on. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I actually like, I, I like watching the CrossFit games because yeah. one, one people wipe out hard. Uh, yeah. But, but when people like, it's because that's like an endeavor. It's like watching pro football. Sure. The problem is people think that they should train like that. Like you mm -hmm. don't like football players don't train with 
like full contact pads every fucking day. You know, like yeah. you train very basic movements and a lot of the cross that's the CrossFit athletes, they train very, they break it down and they don't actually do the whole wad every day. You know, yeah. it's the same thing that you look at for, you know, other aspects of it. Like the, the labeling of what was it? the labeling of, of fitness, like the, the functional fitness thing mm. um, that was big for a little while. And then, then, it, uh, then it died out. We had people like Naudi Aguilar and stuff like that. And I used to dog on that motherfucker constantly, but um, because I found it hilarious, like function, like functional fitness, there's not much more that's more functional than a deadlift just right. to be real. You know, yeah. uh, you know, when swinging a kettlebell is not necessarily functional, uh, and, and function for what would be the question, like right. when they talk about functional fitness, it's like, as you said, I think you hit the nail on the head, but you said, I want to be able to do things in life. Like what's more functional than that? And so yeah. how do you approach that? How right. do you approach training? And I, I just find, you know, the the craziness of, of, of all that shit to be like kind of horrible. And that, the functional fitness people are, are dying out because people are just like, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. What uh, you've done a good job. Also, your Instagram's pretty big too. So, as Instagram came up, how did you like morph? Like, how did you switch? You know, switch that because sure. I think that's an interesting thing. You, there's a few people that came, that went from YouTube and are still doing really well on Instagram too. Yeah. And it seems to be like if you want to be from with the old school uh, uh, YouTube realm, that that you had to be able to pick up on that. So yeah. like it's an evolution of social media and you, you joke about not being tech savvy, but you obviously know what the fuck you're doing when it comes to different avenues of social media. And you are obviously super well researched on business and how, and the marketing of everything like that. You know, obviously you have a degree in business. So my man, I did not actually, I took the two years and then I was training people and then I decided not, I didn't complete it, but I am interested in business. I just want to, I never want to, oh, I got you. Something you, you don't have. Yeah. We're on YouTube. They, they, like yeah. some, somebody right now is like typing furiously <laughs> to find out what your degree is in, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I just want, I always want to be straight up. That's all. Oh my God. I, you know, I mean, I said, I, I cause I, I that, and I said I was in the Marines one time and they're like, Oh my God, what'd you do? Like I, I was a nobody. <laughs> like, yeah. I, know, I know it's very popular for people to talk about like, them being, like, you know, assassins and shit like that. I stood yeah. watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Wait, you weren't on the farm. No, I didn't. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Nobody was actually. <laughs> Nobody was. <so>. Right. <laughs> um, but how how did you make that evolution? Because like you, mm -hmm. Meg Squatch has fucking done a great job of, of transitioning over to Instagram, yeah. mm -hmm. I, but a lot of them haven't. You know, yeah. and I, I I think that that's one of the things why you're still doing so well. But how how how, how did you go about that? So. You're absolutely right. There's one, if anyone's interested in reading anything about marketing, someone that I do like, and I spoke actually with Alan, which is how I identified him, like Tribes. You read Tribes? I think he, uh, Seth Godin is his name. Uh, have you read Alan any of his stuff? I think I have. Okay, yeah. There's a Purple Cow is another one. Just, just good stuff. Anyways, um, the concept is that social media is going to continue to evolve. You know, oh, yeah. there's YouTube, and YouTube has proved pretty resilient. It's not going to be around forever. No. Instagram at the start, I went on it much like when Snapchat was uh, taken off and yet DJ Cal, I'm like, wait a second, let's just explore this. It only stays up for 24 hours. What things can you impart that are going to be sustainable for five years, 10 years, 20 years? Right. Inst Instagram was one of those things. When I saw people get on it, I still kind of treated it as a joke. Like my Instagram's one big meme of yeah. uh, just shit that I like to talk about. But I recognized that I could show a different facet of myself versus YouTube. Same, same aspect, but it's a little less informative. And I think what it is, is the more you show genuinely your personality, not this, not this shtick, but like <coughs> probably the best thing that I could personally hear from someone is like, man, you're just like in the videos. I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't I be? Like, right. why? Like, I, I assume I'll, if I meet you in person, you'll just be like how we've been talking, how yeah. you're like in your videos, right? Um, and so I think fleshing out an individual is important. I think for myself, I just saw it and I started thinking, oh, wait, it's it's words plus a picture. It's still content. So I, I saw the utility. And that's what stopped me from Twitter, where I, I can see some utility for sure in Twitter. And, but I was like 140 characters. How much can I convey here? So right. I looked first. What the medium is the message. I looked first. Wait a second. What can we do here? OK. And then I tried to I got on it. And then it was it was. People think that because you have an established presence on one platform, it's going to automatically translate. No. I mean, I think everything has – every medium has its own particular language you have to learn. And I think it's the role of a communicator to try and best learn how to communicate their information. So I agree. Like the, the – I, I use my Instagram as like a 
I, I talk about the comments and stuff like that. It's like more mm -hmm. me, me kind of being mean to people, but uh, you know, the my, my Casey, the Casey Mitchell, Casey yeah. Mitchell's YouTube. He puts out good content, but it, like it just he can't seem to catch, you know. But on Instagram, man, he's like fucking his interactions crush, you know, like, yeah. and it's very strange. It's the same thing. I talk about a lot about the fat acceptance community. The fat mm -hmm. acceptance community thrives on Instagram. It's a huge thing. Like, I mean, they're, they're protected almost like you, I mean, Instagram gets pissed at me often, but yeah. if you look at it on YouTube, they, I mean, all, all my fat acceptance videos have like 99% approval ratings. Yeah. <clears throat> Whereas on Instagram, not so much, you know, they, they're not happy with me. I think yeah. it's an interesting you know, endeavor, but I also find when people are not themselves, like I, I don't like when people are different on different social media platforms. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like it needs to be you, it can be a different side of you, but it needs to be you still, you know, like yeah. if the personality is completely different. You're just a fucking fake, but I, you know, the, the interaction you do with it, do with them, I think it's funny because you, you poke fun at yourself a lot. I think, I, that, I think that yeah. that's in, like endearing to people. And I think that's a good thing. And I think it's a lost art too. Like, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people from your YouTube class don't make it, you know? Um, <clears throat> I so, would say, Alan, uh, did you play a, you played sports growing up? Yeah. I was, a, I was a track athlete. And just, yeah. Yeah. See, it's like when you talk about making fun of yourself and all those healthy things, that's just part of playing sports, being oh part God, of a yeah. team, the general banter that you have between a bunch of buddies and yourself. Like that's just, so I'm used to, I enjoy that banter. Right. But for some people, I think, I don't know. They don't well, have that I, experience in group sports. People always like the, for, cause for a while when I was just doing the comment, the, like the rip, the roast videos and the comedy, people are like, well, you know, how long does it take you to write that? I'm like, man, this is, I t that's like me and my buddies sitting around having a bunch of beers talking about people. Like that's yeah. literally how I picture it. You know, like yeah. when I, you know, it, when I, when I, before I got married and all like that, when I would just sit around and drink beer for way too much, way too long a period of time with my friends, that's literally like, we would just like fucking roast each other. You know, like yeah. That, yeah. we found that funny, you know, I yeah. just find it funny. I, some of the best jokes I've heard about me are fucking hilarious. I love it when they make <laughs> memes about me. I, I find it's fucking funny, you know, like, yeah. The, I see these people get so pissed off about, about shit like that. Like, first of all, that is the way to encourage them yes. to make to make fun of you more. It, it just yep. absolutely is. It's it's the way. But like, I make fun of myself. Like, I what I remember, I called it like I, I M and M the crowd. Like, I, I made a video like, okay, I'm old and bald. Um, I got baggy eyes. I got fucked up teeth. What are you gonna say? Like, like yeah. now, now what are you gonna say? Because yeah. it's all true. It, it's it's fucking all true. You know. And at the time, I was fat too. I called myself fat. You know, and I was, it's it's all true. I just don't understand. I don't understand why people can't look at themselves in the mirror and accept shit. You know, I, I wish I wish they, I, I wish more people could be like you and, and do that. Because again, to me, it's about like looking at people that have the content on. Like I am going to be inviting people that like I, I don't like on here, but yep. I wanted to start off with like people I do like. So, <laughs> uh, you know, He's the man. Good. Um, Alan, I appreciate I really all like the kind words, man. It's been. Uh, it's been very cool to see the evolution of fitness. I'll, I'll say in general. And so I think you're doing good work in terms of trying to educate people. And I think most importantly, sometimes people um, can focus too much on, as you said, the language, like, Oh, you swear a lot, as opposed to the intent behind the content where you have a genuine desire to try and help people mm -hmm. that informs everything else. They rather have someone talk therapy to them, yeah. you know, in, in a way that they want to hear the things as opposed to here's the reality of what you need to hear. And Hey man, I'm going to be here for you. If you want to make a change, I actually got you. And I see yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the, and I have, I have people, you know, in, in the comments, invite Tyrone, invite Tess. Tess Holiday would never, ever, ever have a conversation with me. I can guarantee that shit, but neither would Tyrone. Like, that's what I find. I, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody that I've roasted to say, yeah, I'll have a conversation with you. You know, I, I really am just because I don't, I, I don't have a problem with that. Like I, I, I really don't. I, I, I wish they would. Somebody just mentioned Keenan body. I saw your videos about that, by the way. That's the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, sure. before I let you go. The whole Natty verified thing. Oh yeah. You know, I've, always, I've always thought he's kind of a joke. So I, I don't, right. I really don't pay much attention. And I mean, I'm, you don't need to agree with me because if you're, if you know him or whatever, but he's obviously, I mean, he's one of the people that like loves the fame. From what I understand, he's rich as fuck anyway. He doesn't even need the money. <clears throat> and that whole tirade, like I wanted to like send him the number of a doctor to get his meds adjusted because yeah. he like he was like people called him out on being a fake natty or whatever, which I find stupid. The fake the whole fake natty thing I find egregiously dumb because yeah. it doesn't in, in relative terms, it does not matter. Most of these people don't deny 
that they're that they're on something they just don't admit it you know like and to and be to be real if you're going to try to think that you're going to do his workouts and look like him when he can sleep in till 10 o'clock every fucking day and shit like that like his yeah. life's different than yours right preferable genetics all, all those things all come things, together yeah. Yeah. And, 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 I'm, and i'm not saying he doesn't work out hard you know yeah. but he has like he could work out all fucking day if he wanted to get a massage do blah 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 all that shit right he's not but, the normal result of what he recommends right exactly yeah. But the Natty Verified thing mm. had to be the r most ridiculous shit I've ever seen where he was talking about, like, they're going to have to do this. They're going to have to do that. <laughs> oh, well, man. How do you uh, get that detached uh, you know, uh, from, from reality? I, your videos on it were very funny because I could see it in your face. You're like, okay, listen. <laughs> you, were like talking to, you were like talking to a child. You're like, okay, listen. Uh, I understand it, was, it was tough, know. Alan. You know why it was tough is um... – so a few things, any, any opportunity for tyranny, any time something could turn into a witch hunt where it's draconian in nature is dangerous. Where some of the language, I'm like, this is too inflammatory. Everyone needs to do this. I'm like, dude, check this out. I've been on YouTube for 10 years. I'm one of the OGs with the K, man. I, I believe in informed consent. Be open. I don't have a problem with anyone that's enhanced. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I've brought a lot of people on the channel that are enhanced. They talk about their journey. Cool. But I think you should be vocal if you have an endorsement and you're trying to say get this body and yet you're not admitting these things so i'm at i'm at the forefront i'm one of the ogs of this topic and then to see someone almost kind of co-opted i'm not calling out keno body but just saying like this is now the solution like wait a second man this is a way more complex situation than i think you understand i think what happened is that he found out or maybe heard about this CIR carbon isotope ratio test and thought himself after he heard a limited bit of knowledge, this is the thing. And people don't want it. It's, it's alluring. It's kind of like that area 51 thing. They don't want you to take it because uh, it's expensive. People don't talk about it because it works. So it's creating almost a conspiracy theory. And then it turns into this witch hum where it's like, wait a second, player, you're talking about being Bruce Wayne. And now you're trying to actually be Bruce Wayne. Need I just say that the real thing about Bruce Wayne is not that he was rich, it's not that he was attractive, it's not that he got the girls, it's that he was a billionaire and that he decided with his time to be a masked individual that attempted to do good and did not take the fame onto himself. So he spent his time trying to help people. And so the whole Natty Verified movement as soon as I saw it, I immediately thought in my mind that there's going to be some people, and I'm not going to name names once again. There's a few people that said, yeah, man, I'll take the test. I'm like, I don't know if you're 100% natural, you know, where there's there's clearly some loopholes and presenting it as a neat solution to a complex situation was downright dangerous. I think his intention, and that's why I kind of look at people's intention, I, I think he seemed well-intentioned. So that's why I didn't want to rag on him too hard. I wouldn't want to be like, man, but I'm like, wait a second, Greg, this is, come on, man. Yeah. We need to slow down a second. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad there's people making content on it and so forth. I saw him. Uh, it was good. And, and, and that's why when you said about staying in your lane, I'm like, I know some stuff. I'm not well-versed on steroids yeah. at all. Let me bring on someone who could talk about these right. things and then everyone can know better. Yeah. The, the, my, my, when I, when I saw it, I was just like, first of all, it opens the doorway for people that have used stuff before that mm -hmm. that have built a physique and built a yeah. body or built a base off of incredible amounts of use yeah to, then have, <clears throat> that have been off for a little bit or could find a way to, to to you know get enough off enough for the protocol to beat the test because there's not there's not tests that can't be beaten like that that's the thing yeah. then there that also now you're saying this person's natty verified it would actually do more damage than it would have helped you know because yeah. in, in relative terms <laughs> it's what we've been talking about how that person looks like is relatively insignificant compared to you know compared to anything else like it, it like in, in reality standards like i always i always talk about this because the request i get is like what do you do for your shoulders because i've got broad shoulders right <laughs> my my dad is so broad i can stand by he's old an old man now i can stand yeah. behind him he still can't see me it's just like yeah. he's just it's genetic you know so there's a certain degree of that plays into genetics workout everything like that that night you know i've focused on shoulders way too much for years because i wanted to look like road warrior hawk you know like sure. i mean like yeah. you know, it's what i wanted you know i wanted to be able to lift people up over my head yeah. and to you know place that much emphasis on what the person looks like so i find it's just you know it's sad that, that people do that but i just like I said, I've always, I, I, I've, I've, I know people that know him too. Like I have friends that, yeah. that are friends with him that I've met since, since YouTube. 
Yeah. And I hear he's a nice guy. I just really think that he like needs to like lay off the pot a little bit because I have nothing against marijuana, but holy fuck, he seems like he's just smashed all the time. Because that was it. Like the one video I watched that was got sent to me, I was like, he's got to be high. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I mean, he, he's he's filming himself clearly fucked up, ranting about other people. Oh, I was just, the three a.m. one you're talking about, Alan, yeah. where he's like after being drunk. Yeah, that's so you talked about keeping it real. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta you gotta self police. The things he's doing is a stream of consciousness. I'm like, wait a second here, yeah. man. Like, slow down. Like, actually, remove this video. Yeah. Like, I, I was just like, what the fuck? Some, some, it's, it's such, it, there, there's so many interesting characters. Like, it, yeah. I'd, I'd never run out of material if I still did Rose. I really wouldn't. You know, and I still right. do them occasionally, but, you know, I just, I find it an interesting, an interesting thing. So, where do you think YouTube fitness is going to go next? Like, that's the last okay. thing we can end up with. Sure, man. Yeah. So I'll give a, a brief, boring ass rundown of how I see um, YouTube, the evolution to where we are and where I think it's going to be going. So you have the first phase, which is 2007 to 2010, which is the progenitors. So the people that never quite gained that traction, some of them did, like Scott Herman. I started during that time, Scooby, 1961. But there was no such thing as the YouTube fitness community. It was a bunch of general information. There wasn't High level of fitness information. There wasn't a coverage of different uh, niches. So when it comes to straight sports, it was just general. It's like people filming YouTube content with their cameras looking like potatoes. Cool. So that that's the start. But then the second phase was the Hodge twins from, I'd say, 2010 to 2013, mm -hmm. where they really expanded the door. Um, mm -hmm. So they were around. Uh, I was around first. They started, they took it to the next level. And I yeah. will be the first to admit that where they brought in a lot of general eyeballs. Then you had guys like Matt Ogus, Chris Jones, Strength Camp, Elliot Hulse coming up. And that's 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 the phase that I came up in too, where now became a community. So a, a, a fractured community of different people talking about different things. And then phase three would be 2014 to 2016, which would be the rise of the vloggers, I'd call that. So you have the Christian Guzmans, you have Max Tuning, you have other individuals. You actually have also niches being established, however. So now it's not just general fitness content. You have strength sports. So that's where Mark Bell was making content since 2005, but his channel actually took off in 2015. Right. Um, Alan, Alan Thrall comes in that category. Candido, where he's 2013, he was popping off in 2014. You have more cool niches coming about. Um, phase four is now the established 2016 to almost present where people know they can make a thing. So now you have people that used to watch the content making the content. Um, mm -hmm. So it's almost self-referential. And then you have a refinement going on. So you have guys like Jeff Nippert who had been around for a while, but then he decided, you know, let me crush this editing man and let me spend 30 hours on a video editing one. And his channel popped off. So he had uh, a, a following, but then he really uh, grew up. There was the... Expansion of the evidence-based community. I am not as well versed, I'll say right now, as you are, or maybe James from Spread of Sports uh, Science, when it comes to general YouTube. So outside of my niche, but there's been the rise of the evidence-based crew. So you have other guys like uh, Vitruvian Physique, um, Scott, you know, remain relevant. Other people coming into the fray, adding information. I'd say this is also where Alan, you came in, where James is on the later half um, coming in. And now the current I'd say phase five that we're entering is an, a further expansion and a contraction in some areas. So if you put up general content that everyone has seen a million times before and you have a bland personality, there, there are more criteria to stand out right now than ever before. However, mm -hmm. there's a bigger audience. Part of the new phase or part of phase five, in my opinion, would be the Juji Mufu effect. And I have to give Tom Boyd in credit for this, which is, Really, when we talk about vlogs, I, I like their videos a lot because they go to a lot of different people. They go to arm wrestlers. They go to climbers. They go to strongman competitors. They go to the actual events. They interview the people. So it's almost like a quasi-documentary. And now you've seen the rise of the Giants, Alan. So we were putting out content like you get good views. Some other people get good views. Now you have Eddie Hall, Brian Shaw, yeah. uh, Larry Wheel. So these superstars of strength sports – getting more views than ever before three four five hundred thousand views a video I, know, so I, crazy. I, th I think one of the things uh, to be cautious of is just the potential tving of youtube which is as things get a little slicker as it gets less personal right as you guess you said you started out talking in your car to the people 
that's what makes YouTube unique. So we have to try and maintain that right. as you know, production expands, as more money enters the picture, there's more incentives. I, I think there's still a lot of opportunity for one people to enter the market. I think there's a lot of uncovered, unexplored territory out there. I think you could still, when you brought up squat videos, like I've made 50 squat videos, but I, I think there's still ways, and Jeff Nifford is the proof of that, um, uh, along with a few other people, that you could take information that people already know, package it differently in a good, unique way, or a way that people, they can process the information more effectively, and it still has that utility. So I think, I think we're potentially at a really good spot for YouTube fitness. Who knows what's going to happen? Like any other social media platform, Alan, I personally feel it's volatile, but yeah. I feel there's more <laughs> good, however we use that metric to uh, figure that out, more good content uh, content creators than ever before. And also, honestly, probably more shit, but, you know, there's more good. Yeah. I so. appreciate it, man. Like, I I, 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 would, I would agree. I, th- I think it's going to be an interesting future. I, 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 do, th- I do always wonder how youtube is going to see us now that youtube is doing youtube tv and stuff like that you know like mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. now that now that they're getting more involved into like the actual like tv shows i see them pushing that shit more than not necessarily like the actual youtubers yeah because you know it's kind of sad too because the platform was presented like you too like you yes. do youtube like you make video and mm-hmm. now it's not it's not necessarily like that um i do I, I i agree with you especially when it comes to the fitness like when it comes to fitness i do think that you know as the audience gets wiser um i think that like some of the ridiculous bullshit's being eliminated it's just eliminating itself it really is you know but i do uh, unfortunately see that like as we like get more unhealthy as a society it's almost more important now than ever for people to actually be speaking about you know just like like one of the things you said i find i I find it awesome like you're talking you know people to be active like active is good active is good you know and that's That's it's it's the important shit, you know. Like, don't be so tribal that you, that you can't recommend somebody to do something else. Like, I I I personally like I I am not big into running. I'm not. It fucking hurts the fuck out of me. Uh, yeah. You know, I like sprinting. Long distances are just not fun. I, I fucking hate them. You know. Yeah. But um, if it's what you love, fucking go to it. Like, I mean, I, you know, what what can I do to help you? You know. And I think that that's where the, we need to stay and get to. I think that that's where like we need to do it in a entertaining fashion uh and i think that that's partly where like the word cringe has come from where some people try to be entertaining and it's not you know it's really really not you know um let's see what else I, people are asking me asking about Elliot in the in the comment section. I'm not going to talk about Elliot Holtz. Elliot, 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 um, I, do you have a uh, Alan? Did something happen, or you don't oh, need to get in? I've I've made videos about him before because I think he's a complete batshit crazy wing. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, you know, but yeah, I, people are asking about him. I, I don't even want to give him like he's on no a whole other, he's a whole other level right now of, of fucking. Yeah, back. I mean, some of the things I I'm not as well versed. I went down there in 2013. I had my experience. You know, I uh, I let I I try. I, I try and let people make up their opinion. I used to be more inflammatory before, more direct yeah. to my thoughts. It's, I prefer everyone just to come up with their own yeah. judgment of people. Well, I mean, because they, I know you did a video with them and people were asking about him in the comments. We're not going to talk about him. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the extent of what we're going to talk about because he's yeah. a loon back. But well, hey, I, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, Alan, something I want to say. Um, I've actually thoroughly enjoyed this, man. And I want to say for the record, I think if you try and establish this into something, because I recently, myself and Eric, we got into podcasting. I really enjoy Iron Culture that we do where we try and get you know, just some PhDs to talk about different things, mm-hmm. science, history, awesome. culture. I think you can absolutely carry a podcast. I think your questions were very well formed. I think the flow was very good um, here. And I'm not, I'm giving you like live feedback, but I'm just saying that I think, I think this has uh, some potential legs on it. I like it, man. Well, thank you. I, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that, like, because I, I, I did have a, a podcast I actually put on, like, put on Apple and stuff like that for a while. And yeah. one of the things that my wife and I have had to do, we've had to pare down, like, certain things. Like, we run three businesses, basically. Like, yeah. you know, and so the podcast became very much of a pain in the ass, you know? Like, yeah. so this now I can, like, have, you know, it can be a content for you, too. Like, it's like birds with one stone type thing, sure. you know? <clears throat> but I also want to make sure that I'm talking to people. Like I plan on using this to talk to people that have really good weight loss stories too, because I do mainly like weight loss. But I also want to talk to people just like ge- just in general about fitness, like from YouTube, from out of YouTube, that sort of thing. I think it's important that we have conversations about like uh, about fitness because it's almost becoming like lost. You know, like in in reality, about 10, 10 to fifteen percent of the population really gives a fuck about fitness. You know, I mean, and that's that's kind of sad. 
And I think it's important that even though, like, and I, and this goes out to the, anybody that's out there that's watching this that might, you know, that I, I send an invite to that might be afraid to come on here. You know, I mean, I'm going to speak my mind. And I'm always going to be me, but I, I, I really want to bring people on here, whether I agree with them, disagree with them, anything like that, because I think fitness is something that is related to different people in different times and by different ways, you know, and I would rather have somebody on here that really just fucking can't stand me and me try to even, you know, you'll know, help them, you know, have an avenue to just yell at me if they want to, as long as they can get their fitness message out and it speaks to one person, I'm good with that. You know, like yeah. uh, I'm not. I'm not right all the time. And <clears throat> like people are asking to have Harry on, I'd absolutely have Chris Harry on here. Yeah. Um, e even though I think he's like a snot nosed kid and he's basically just a bar athlete and fucking yeah. you know, on, on our feet. I, I am, he's my bitch. Um, yeah. But you know, I'd have him on here to talk about calisthenics because I think it's awesome. I plan on trying to have Austin Dunham, Gabo Saturno. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to have a bunch of other people on here from that realm, because I really think that talking about fitness, just us talking about health, wellness, fitness, is more important now in our society than it's ever been. You know, I we have more sick people and more people that are in ill health than anything else. So I think it's important that <clears throat> even people that, you know, I mean, I obviously, I obviously am a fan of your work, but even people that I'm not a fan of, I think it's important that I offer them an avenue to come on here. And if nobody else is going to, because I just, that's what I don't see. I don't see anybody else really doing shit like that. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm almost like amazed at how, I, I got to be honest. When I when I sent when I sent you the message, I was shocked. You're like, yeah, let's fucking do it. Like, yeah, because so many people have been like, it's like I can see they read it. Like I can see yeah, you read uh, it, yeah, motherfucker, yeah. and yeah. you're not answering back. Yeah, and like, and you, I've seen like I I've seen you comment on my shit. I know I know you know who I am. You yeah. know, and I understand to a certain degree that you know some people might be hesitant because I'm not necessarily the nicest dude, but in yeah. reality, I just want to make sure that everybody, even if I like them or not has an avenue to have, you know, verbiage. They, they, they can discuss with me and they, or, or the audience what their beliefs are. And if, if, and if, you, if you're out there and you're, you're hesitant about it, my only you know, thing I got to say to you is I'll, you know, I'm never going to just make up shit. So if yeah. you're confident with your content and you're confident with your knowledge, it should not be an issue. You know, it yeah. should, you know, and yeah, I, you're, I, not, you're not slanderous at all. I, I think um, if anything, what I appreciate or what I see with the content is that you're transparent and that you're vocal as opposed to people, you know, the slickness of once again, a marketing or saying syrupy things like you're saying what you feel and what you think. Yeah. Well, that's like, could we be right a hundred percent of the time? Hell no. But that's the point of having a conversation. Well, Hey man, let me try and understand your perspective a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then let's, let's see if we can reach an agreement. Here's why I think, you know, for someone you said you disagree with, here's why I think it's potentially harmful and then go from there. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I absolutely agree. Like the, the, the best, the best part about fitness is like, I learn shit every day. I really, yeah. do. I learn, I learn, I learn some of it's what not to do. And a lot of it's what to do. Like I, I learn all the time from it. I just think that, you know, it should be more open like that. And, you know, to me, it's never about trying to hurt the person. It's trying about making sure they don't hurt somebody else. Yeah. Thing, you know? So, but man, I wanted to thank you for coming on. I really did. I really fucking enjoyed it. Dude, I, Absolutely enjoyed it. We got to get you on my channel. We'll, uh, we'll yeah. get something figured out. Yeah. yeah uh, where, you're situated in Connecticut? Oh, no, I'm in Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, Pittsburgh. Okay. Hey, that's not bad. That's yeah. not that far from, because uh, I went to the Arnold for the first time in 2018, and that's from Ohio. You're, you're going to tell me, it's like, no, nah, man, it's like a nine hour drive. No, it's no, like it's like, four, it's like the, yeah, Arnold, so the Arnold is in Columbus. It's like three hours. Oh, yeah, that's what, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be at the, I'm gonna be at the Arnold this year. It's my Very first cool. ever. It's my first ever expo, and I'm actually gonna go. I'm gonna hang out with. Uh, nice. Tracy. Yeah. Hey, uh, all I gotta say about that man is um, enjoy it. I, I'm probably gonna go just to check it out. It is madness. Not I don't mean that in a negative way, but just the amount of people. You're great at talking. Like you'll be completely uh, fine. I'm, but I'm horrible in person bad. though, dude. Like I, I, really? I, I yeah, like I've I've basically monetized like social uh, awkwardness. Like, I mean, like, you know, I'm like in person, like, I, first of all, this is all very new to me. Like pe right. people walk up and like, man, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Like, why, why are you talking oh, to me? Oh, it gets a little weird out. And I don't mean that in a bad way when people approach, but because they feel like they know you, as you said, they come right up to your face. I'm like, I don't know you at all, man. Yeah. Like so. bubble, bubble, my bubble. <laughs> my bubble. Like, and I get noticed, like, I don't get recognized in gyms. It's weird. Right. Like, I, I get recognized in like PetSmart. Nice. You know, like, your pet smart. Yeah, like, I don't, I get, or, or, like, or pet smart or like this Mexican restaurant. Like, and it's sometimes it's, it's so bizarre for me. Like me and the wife were out uh, last early, like last week. 
and we're sitting there and we're having our chips and nachos, our chips and salsa, right? You know, yeah. and like these people are like looking down at their phone, looking up at me, looking down at their phone, looking at me, like, like, <laughs> oh no, you know, like, you know, what, what the fuck, man? You probably got me like uh, with a chip in my mouth. But, you know, Do you really need to film that? It's fine. You can take the photo. And it's it's but, you know I, it's neat, but you know I'm. I'm a f- almost fifty year old dude who like yeah. <laughs> you're a grown ass man. Yeah, like for people what to like your wife. Yeah, like you're out eating with your wife. Like, hey man, I just want to eat out here with my wife. I, I, don't get me wrong. I I, w- I wish they would have just come over. You know, and yeah. say, so, you know, I yeah. really I really wish they, they would they would have come over. Like the that's, but for me it's so so very fresh too. Like people are like I can't wait to meet you. I'm like really what the fuck. Like, so uh, as an example, I love interacting with people that come up to me. I had someone send me a DM on Instagram saying saw you and he just sent me like four photos he took on the because i take the subway um off on the subway and he never like he was just on his phone and he like i guess he angled it up like that but just it was like four different ones from four different times and i was like uh, you didn't say hi <laughs> it's, now it's creepy <laughs> yeah, that's a little yeah are you, are you are you collecting strands of my hair you know, yeah like, that's a little fucking crazy you know like yeah. we've had we've had shit too before where it's like i i i, I have a a closed group, a cl- you know, every day fitness Facebook group, and um, mm-hmm. like we're at Athlete X, and we're sitting there having dinner. We're having we we uh, we actually employ some coaches for for our weight loss, our weight loss things. We're having a meeting with our coaches, <clears throat> and like all of a sudden, like I get a notification that somebody posted from ath- from the Athlete X convention in my Facebook group, and it's it reads like I'm sitting right next to Alan and Crystal. Crystal's my wife's name. I, I'm sitting right yeah. next to Alan and Crystal. Like I'm like, come say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's very, yeah. it's very strange, but, uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll be at the Arnold this year for the first time and probably last time ever. It's probably the, I'm not a fitness expo guy, but no. so if you're there, if you're there, we can maybe do, do something there. Or if you ever want me, if you're me on your channel, let me know. So yeah, everyone, no, me, everyone, 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 if any of your friends are ever pissed at me and they want to yell at me, we can help, we can hook that up too. No, everyone's fine. Like I, you said, Scott's, Scott's good. He's chill. Yeah. I think he probably was just like, uh about that video. Everyone, I think if you've been around long enough, <laughs> there is kind of that, the proving that, Happens where man, if you have a thin skin or anything, I, I see. I see him trying to change his content though. Like that's the, that's the thing. Oh, like, he, he, he's. I I really think that he like. And don't get me wrong, to each your own. But I see him trying to do this whole call out thing, like 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 the, like that me and a few other people do. And that just like to me, it just doesn't come come across as genuine, you know. And and it's one of the big things. Like you got to be very sure. Like you get the content. Like I re- right. I, I don't just. I don't ever just like sit down in front of the camera and start ranting about people. I I research shit. Yes. And to to go, he 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 just you know he commented that he's gonna I think address the the the, the comment he made about Brad Schofield in right. his next video. That was you know if you look at the comments in, in on his video, it's pretty fucking clear. Like everybody knows he got it wrong. That's what right. that's what you don't want to do. You know, like hey, here's a great opportunity, Alan, for Scott if he's listening to get Brad Schoenfeld, who's a great guy. He has a Skype. He has his camera. We got him set up. Just have him on the channel, then. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, that 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 I think more shit like that, that needs to happen now. Like Definitely. I have yeah. I have an open like I have open invitations. Like I, I I'd have Vince Sant on here today. Like fuck, dude. I like if he messaged right now, I'd fucking I'd be like, I'd, I'll send you a fucking link. You can get on right now. I don't even need to nice. fucking, pause. You know, I have. Yeah. I I think more people should have conversations about it. Like, if you've got an if if I have an issue with somebody's content, I would never ever turn down talking to them, ever. Yeah. Because that's how clear I I know I am about it, and I think that would be awesome. But all right, man. So I I, t- I we've been on for like almost fucking two hours. So. I've had it. Look, this is my pre-workout, Alan. I'm ready now to squat. Good, good, good. good. Yeah. I'm I'm ready to go have some dinner, and I'm gonna fucking lay down. I'm, I'm a little tired today. I, I, I worked. I, I, I apologize. No, 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 no. You're not keeping me up. I mean, I'm not that old. It's almost it's yeah. almost 7 p.m. here, but I got yeah. up at like four o'clock in the morning, so I'm fucking yeah. up. But, all right, man. I really appreciate it. Well, we'll talk soon. Okay. Definitely, Alan. Thank you very much for having Thank me on. You. And.